Good afternoon and welcome to Milbrae as the Ayrshire Bulls welcome Watsonians Rugby in round five of the Fors Rock Super 6 Sprint Series and this is a game which is going to have huge ramifications as to where the inaugural Sprint Series is going to end up because Watsonians Rugby currently sitting top of the pile followed closely by Ayrshire Bulls they're certainly getting out the traps well they've set the pace in the sprint and off the back of a couple of impressive wins last a fortnight ago against uh, Heriots and Southern Knights. Both teams coming to this game, Bruce Miller with a bit of form. They're both in absolutely superb form, uh, Watsonians. Uh, both playing different styles of, of rugby. Watsonians are trying to play a very expansive game. We spoke about it last, uh, last time out a fortnight ago against Watsonians, trying to play that kind of wide, wide game. Um, the Ayrshire Bulls relying much more on on their physicality, but but still, you know, they, they throw the ball about. I'm not not to suggest that they're they're a, um, a one-dimensional team at all. So I, I think that would be very interesting. But of, of today, just the the clash of the of, of the two differing differing approaches to the game. Yeah, they both have different styles, as you can see. Watsonians just uh, getting the the last orders from uh, Nicky Walker and Fergus Pringle, who are watching on. As they look to try and really consolidate their place, a victory here for Watsonians would be massive in terms of putting a little bit of distance between the two teams before the sprint. Yes, exactly. I, I think it's probably worth explaining the fact that it's, it's not playoffs once the league splits after um, after today. Um, it, it's not that the slate is wiped clean and it's playoffs. The, the, the points score, the league points, the, the points differential, etc., they all continue on. So um, we'll, we'll have a look at the league table uh, just shortly, I would hope. Um, but we'll see that if Watsonians were to win, I'm not going to say they've got, the, got it in the bag, but there's a, the, they could potentially have a seven or eight points advantage at the end of today over the Chasers with only 10 points up for grabs. Um, whereas if, if the Bulls, well, in fact, we've got the table for you now. So you can see that we could have Watsonians, if they were to win with a bonus point today, end up on, on 23 uh, points at, at the end of today with the Bulls, give or take a bonus point, uh, trailing them by seven or eight points. And then, of course, I don't want to go too much into the, the game later this afternoon, but Stirling County and Heriot's playing to decide who will join them in the, in the top three. But I think the, the two chasers would find it very hard to catch Watsonians if, if they end up on 23. Um, so I, I guess for the, from a, the, the, the sake of the competition, the neutral observer might be looking for the Ayrshire Bulls to, to win today and, and keep things tight at the top. Yeah, and home advantage here is going to have a huge impact in terms of the Ayrshire Bulls. They've, they've not lost at home. They've, um, they've only had one defeat away from home against Stirling County. Watsonians have won two games away from home. So... You know, home advantage coming to Milbrae for Watsonians is going to be a huge, huge task because this Ayrshire Bulls team is really, really robust and physical. Very physical and Milbrae is such a hard place to, to go and, and play and, and get a win, which we've seen over the years. Um, and, and so, you know, Watsonians, well, they'll be relishing the, the challenge, of, no doubt, of going there. And again, I don't want to get into what may or may not happen uh, after the split, but when, um, when first play second, it, it'll be whoever finishes top of the, the table today will have home advantage and, and that again could be could be crucial in what will be a final game of the, the season. Both teams have got themselves into very fortunate positions as they, they head towards the, the finishing line of this sprint series and Ayrshire Bulls have had to make a few changes to their team which was very very comfortable winners against the Southern Knights a fortnight ago down at the Green Yards it was an emphatic victory where they won by a, a 50 point margin it was a, a huge, huge victory, 12 points to 62, they eventually won. So they have had to reshuffle the pack as both teams are just awaiting the um, the orders from the referee to come out of the tunnel. It'll give us a bit of a chance to look at the two teams. So Matt Curry comes in at the start and line up. Um, that is, this is the, the visitors there, Matt Curry, the, the winger from Edinburgh. He comes in at the start and line up alongside Joe Reynolds and Lee Miller moves across to 10, which means Jason Baggett drops to the bench. In the front row for Watsonians, they welcome Sam Graham's law and Angus Williams from Edinburgh duty, so it's a, a very experienced front row. But then behind the front row, it's a, quite a settled uh, forward pack there with Ball, Van Niekirk in the second row and the experienced Ian Moody. Off the bench, Loman McPherson, who scored an absolute world of a try against Heriot's a couple of weeks ago, he uh, has to settle for a place in the bench, but it's, a, it's an experienced but also a, a fresh look to this Watsonian side, Bruce. Yeah, there's a few players that we could perhaps pick out. There's a, a change at nine, um, Rory Brand coming in a late change, Rowan Frostwick called up to the Edinburgh squad and, and that has got to be disruptive because they'll, they'll have run with Rowan at nine all week and then a, a late change in a key position but Rory Brand started the game in particular against Heriot's a couple of weeks ago brilliantly so he'll slot in there nicely, Lee Miller 
moving in from 12 to 10, so his first start at, at 10. It'll be interesting to see how he goes with Jason Baggett dropping to the bench. You mentioned in commentary that day, Joe Reynolds came off the bench uh, and, and turned the game around. It was Lewis Berg that got all the plaudits, but really it was Joe Reynolds that just took the game by the scruff of the neck. So it'll be interesting to see how the two centres go. Harry Patterson, electric at fullback, and Matt Curry, the Edinburgh winger. So that really plays into what we said, the, the style of rugby that Watsonians like to play. But up front, very physical. Seb Cecil has been absolutely outstanding as a line-out forward and, and carrying um, and the breakdown is Sam Graham's law came off the bench against Heriots a couple of weeks ago as well and, and just re- gave them a more physical edge. We spoke about how physical Ayrshire Bulls will be today and Sam Graham's law could be key for Watsonians up front. The dynamic backs will have to move this big Ayrshire Bulls team around the pitch because it is certainly a, a team which is very, very physical. They, they took the game to Southern Knights and it was uh, boys against uh, men in that encounter. In the home side, they've been able to rejig things slightly. They've, uh, Jamie Shedden re- retains his place on the wing after a, a hat-trick on debut against the Southern Knights. Elias Caven, he comes in and replaces Aaron Tate, who after four rounds is the, the top point scorer and top try scorer in the Fors Rock Super 6 campaign. So they certainly will be looking for an impact off the bench. The man we're number 24. Familiar half-back pairing with Cam Jones and Christian Townsend. Andrew Nimmo gets a, a start at loose head prop as well. The experienced ex Heriots and Hawks and Scotland under-18s international as well. And Lewis McNamara in the back row, he replaces the, the man of the match against Southern Knights, Ryan Sweeney in the back row, but also Matt Minogue, Joe Knight, Jordan Lanak, they've got some dynamic players to come off the bench as well, and, and they do pack a punch, but, you know, Ayrshire Bulls at Bray, we've seen it years gone by in different guises, the they're not going to surprise us by the way that they play, they're robust, they take the game to the opposition, but, you know, they've got the personnel in there to do that. They're, and their set piece is always very strong. It'll be interesting to see that they've, they've been fortunate. Well, I think all the teams have, have had uh, pro players released, but the, the front row has been bolstered on a number of occasions so far this season uh, by Glasgow Warriors players. They've not got that today, so it'll be interesting to see how they fare there. Blair McPherson is, is such a big physical specimen, the captain at, at eight. Kenny Murray mentioned in commentary uh, three or four weeks ago uh, that maybe uh, discipline had been an issue for him. He had a couple of yellow cards, and, and hopefully he's sorted that out. But the, the backs, let's not forget about that, we're, we're probably making it sound like they are a, a, a very one-dimensional. They, they know what their strengths are, but I mean, look at that. You know, Cam Jones and Christian Townsend, very settled at half-back. Uh, Tom Jordan scored a couple a fortnight ago. Glasgow Warriors player, and alongside uh, Robert Beatty, And I think it, as a centre pairing, very, very solid. But, um, you know, exciting back three as well. Elias Caven in particular, he has got some gas on him so uh, I think they'll be trying to get the, the ball into the hands of the back three as well and as you say real strength coming off the bench yeah a good mix of uh, brains and brawn for the Ayrshire Bulls the, the head coach Pete Horn will be after he's taken over from uh, Peter Murchie he's certainly looking to try and keep the success at Milbrae as they won the uh, Super 6 season the regular season last year beating the Southern Knights in the final at the Dam Health Stadium so they're just the, the mascots there awaiting the arrival of the teams and it's a it's a bit of a fortress Milbury. It's it's gonna be an intimidating atmosphere if it's the Bulls or you know if it's air whatever guys it is, Milbury is a is a, a very, very difficult place to pick up any sort of result. Yeah, I've been down there two or three times with, with teams that I've been involved in and uh, I think probably just come away with the one win. Um, and, and that was very, very hard fought. As well, it's a it's a very hard, uh, very tough place to go. I'm still trying to think, but your your comment you're saying there about brains and brawn. I thought you were about to say in the commentary team. I was trying to work out which which one. So am I. I'm trying to work out now. <laughs> I think as we're well. neither. But uh, yeah, you, with the picture of the crowd there as well. It's a great crowd down here at Milbury. You can see the the weather that we um, that we have today. Fant- it's been fantastic series, really. But uh, here come the visitors. Lee Miller, the captain, who's um, back into the fold now. He's uh, the second top point scorer after four rounds with 23 points. So he's been a welcome addition back for Watsonians. He leads the team onto the field, and uh, it is going to be a, an interesting battle. You can just see Joe Reynolds as well, just with the, the heavily strapped left knee. Just taking a last glug of water before the, the game is going to get underway. And he's a player that brings a lot, a lot of experience. He changed the game against Heriots a couple of weeks ago. Will he have a similar impact as he's up against Tom Jordan and Robert Beatty in the centres for Ayrshire Bulls? But the Bulls do enter onto the field led by their captain Blair McPherson and it is a perfect, perfect day for a game of rugby. There's, there's a little bit of wind here at Milbrae but the sun is shining, the, the, the pitch is dry and I wonder whether that will play in Watsonian's hands. 
Yeah, I, I, again, I, I think um, that, that both sides will want to throw the ball about, so I'm not sure that necessarily does, as we always say, um, it will be won or lost up front, I think, uh, today. Jory Perriam, referee today, a very, very good referee communication, really good as well. Yeah, I think the level of referee in, in the, the, the Ford Rock Super 6 Sprint Series has been absolutely excellent. I've been saying that consistently over the, the campaign. The, the development of the referees is, is as fundamental as the development of the players as well. But Johnny Perry will be assisted by Neil Muir and Alistair Watt this afternoon. And he blasts his whistle and Lee Miller gets play underway here at Millbrae in round five of the Ford Rock Super 6 Sprint Series. And Hersher Bulls look to try and get themselves out of their own 22 as they've fielded the, the kick very well look to try and make an impact on the visitors here look to set up the, the platform kick down field from Cam Jones it's been watched well by Harry Patterson but he's been clattered and the ball has bounced loose the referee oof, and that's another big hit there from Cecil coming in on BA and a few errors coming into the game here. It's uh, been a physical start. A big hit in midfield there from Cecil. I think it was perhaps actually from uh, Lewis Ball was the player who put the big hit in. But a couple of errors there from uh, Patterson at full back. And you can see Air really looking to try and put pressure on the opposition. He just had, I think, half an eye on the, the oncoming defenders and, and probably half an eye on what he was going to do after he caught the ball and uh, and, and just made a, a complete hash of it. I'd like to see the replay because I, I'm not sure whether he was taken without uh, without the ball. I know it's very difficult when you're committed to, to making the tackle and you don't know if the ball's been dropped or not, but there seemed to be just a, a bit of a, a time gap, if you like, between that. But it was an almighty hit from Lewis Ball just shortly after that. And I think we can see these two packs are going to have a right go at each other. Lewis Ball at Germany, under-18 cap. He's a, a player who's he's shown up really, really well this season so far. Very industrious in the second row, but it's an attacking platform for the Ayrshire Bulls now. Perhaps doesn't go to plan, but Michael Scott has done well to pluck the ball from the sky. And the Ayrshire Bulls looking to try and probe round the fringes. Cam Jones feeds Maguire. And Cam Jones keeping the tempo up. He does find Scott again as he bounces off a few Watsonians players and gets closer towards that dry line. And Cam Jones now feeding short. They try and bundle themselves ever so closer to that Watsonian's line. The tempo slightly went out of this move as Blair McPherson adds his services to the breakdown. Now Cam Jones again feeding the forward, coming around the side. Now the chance to go wide, it's now in the hands of Robert Beattie. He puts out the back door, but the ball has went to ground. Referee Johnny Perry, I'm saying it has went back. And it's been well done, well gathered there by Tom Jordan. Now the captain, McPherson. What's on his defence? Holding strong so far. But the body's still piling in from the Bulls. Now Cam Jones spots a little gap, tries to go around the fringes, but he's been met well by Ian Moody. And the referee calling that the ball is out, and the Ayrshire Bulls have to act quickly to try and breach this Watsonian's defence. Cam Jones now, he does feed the hooker. Maguire, he manages to just go through a gap and now the chance is open on the wing here. And do they get in, in the corner? And they do exactly that. It's Liam McNamara who gets the score for the Ayrshire Bulls. And it was patient play from the Bulls. They managed to go through the phases, retain the ball and eventually it was a back who gets the score as they feed the ball over to the left hand side look the ball over the on Russian Watsonian's defence great hands there from Tom Jordan and McNamara goes into the corner for the opening score and that all came from the, the penalty kick to the corner they would have hoped to catch and drive that didn't quite work the plan and but then as you say they were just very patient just folding pods of forwards round the corner and, and essentially trying to batter the, board, the, the door down Watsonian's defence were up to the task but uh, they kept a hold of the ball went through lots of phases and, and just picked the right moment to, to go wide and Lee McNamara, the uh, the fullback on hand to go over for the first try of the afternoon. Liam McNamara was ever present in the game against the Southern Knights, but he was uh, perhaps feeling a bit hard done by that he never got on the score sheet that afternoon. But he gets his try here at Millbrae. 
And their task, Christian Townsend, with a, a very tricky kick on the touchline to make it a full seven points. connection with the ball but just not enough length on that kick from the young fly half so it just remains Air, Ayrshire Bulls 5, Watsonians nil after 5 minutes here and that will be just the start that the Ayrshire Bulls will want because they know how important this game will be in terms of who's going to pick up this crown play back underway it's kicked deep into the Ayrshire Bulls half yet again and Cam Jones acting quickly to kick it downfield. Another tester for Patterson at fullback, but does better on this occasion. He'd be nervous under that one. Yes, he would be, but he's done well to squirm out of the trouble there as well. He's got a lot of Ayrshire Bulls' arms wrapped round him, but Brand manages to get the ball to Graham's law. Davis now acting as a pivot, finds Berg. Berg over the 10 metre line. He's been well defended there by the opposition. Bulls piling yet again, but they managed to strip the ball, and Michael Scott again manages to get, find himself in the right position. He's had an impressive start to this game. Scrappy from the breakdown. Knock on there from the Ayrshire Bulls. Good pressure from Watsonians, but Michael Scott, he's been, he's had a, a world of a start here at Millbrae. And Harry Patterson, as he said, taking that, uh, that ball and counter-attacking for Watsonians and they, they just started to, to get into their attacking shape but we, we said against, I think it was the Heriots game we spoke about it and they, they we can see what they're trying to do they just don't quite have all the pieces in, in place just yet and, and the ball was pulled out the back of the, the pod I think it was read by the, the Ayrshire Bulls defence so they came flooding through um, and, and looking to make tackles behind the game line it was just the power of um, Lewis Berger that got them on the front foot there but um, they've got the ball stolen by Michael Scott and it's what's only scrum, but certainly Ayrshire Bulls had the, the better of the opening six minutes. First scrum of the afternoon, but that's it, it was pretty much a, a common thread of what's only to play against Heriots. They they had pieces of the puzzle, but they didn't have the full, you know, the full application because they're just the, the, the tempo and the pace and the power of the defence there, the defensive line coming up quick from Ayrshire Bulls. It kind of it, it read the move and it, it forced Berg just to try and truck it up and, and he runs into trouble they'll be looking to have as many options I, I mean half the world plays this now you know coming off an edge they'll play off nine and then further out they'll play off ten but he's got to have multiple options that the defence aren't sure what he's going to go to and I think a lot, a lot of the time they're, they're playing and it's easy for the, the defence to, to read and I think that'll be one of their, their real work-ons for today a solid scrum and now Brand looking to try and put the tempo in from round the fringes he manages to go through the gap there he feeds Angus Guthrie the play is now up towards the Ayrshire yeah, Bills 22 as the Watsonians team look to try and reply. And that's a great line there from Patterson. And he just sails through the gap. Good work from the Watsonians' backs. And he just sliced through the gap in the Ayrshire Bulls defence. And now it's all square. Ayrshire Bulls 5, Watsonians 5. I mean, that all came from the break from the scrum by Rory Brand. And then feeding ball out wide and the, I mean, the defence looks like they're all in place, but absolutely cut to shreds by Harry Patterson. Maybe Scotland Sevens debut recently in Singapore and just ran a wonderful line there. Easy hands from Miller to Reynolds and just that acute line coming back from Patterson. It's as simple rugby as you like. Congested space as well, but it was very accurate. And that is perhaps the, the piece of the puzzle that Watsonians have been missing. Accuracy. And the, the communication and the line speed there was brilliant from, from the visitors. As you say, the, the, the hands were, were brilliant. They knew where they wanted to get it. The Ayrshire Bulls' defence will be very disappointed there because they, they, were, um, they, they had all, all the men they needed. It wasn't a huge space. But again, when you're up against a quality player like Harry Patterson, it's easier said than done. Miller certainly got the distance and the accuracy there. He makes it a full seven points for Watsonians, so they react straight away to that opening try from the Ayrshire Bulls. Like Harry with a full Patterson. seven points. Great he try from Harry Patterson. Done. Plus the conversion from Lee Miller. He makes it Ayrshire Bulls five, Watsonians seven. And we could be in, a, in for a, a bit of a ding-dong of an afternoon if it continues at this pace. That's exactly what I was going to say. Just get the feeling that it could be a high-scoring game. We spoke about the weather. The pitch looks absolutely fantastic. And I think we could well be treated to a high-scoring match. The Ayrshire Bulls have only conceded 26 points in their last two outings. 
So there was talk that this was going to be the, the Watsonians' attack against the, the Ayrshire Bulls' defence, which I think is probably a little bit too simplistic a way to, to look at it. It might well just be the two attacks going head-to-head. -head. Yeah, certainly at this level, it's these games are so difficult to predict, but a little unforced error there from the Ayrshire Bulls is that the chasing players just strayed a little bit offside there. There's going to be a, a put into the scrum, and this is a great attacking platform for Watsonians. And it's going to be Brand, ex London Irish scrum half. I believe he started his career at Galloway Triangle back in the borders. So back in Scotland now plying his trade in Watsonians' colours. A dynamic scrum half, and he puts the ball in well there, and the nudge comes on from Watsonians. Moody finds Brand, now into the hands of Reynolds, who finds some space in the Ayrshire Bulls half. He's maybe put a little bit too much on that yeah. as it's been watched by McNamara. And that's going to come back. And a couple of errors there from both teams. Maybe a little bit of inaccuracy from Reynolds and okay. also from the restart from the Ayrshire Bulls. So it's going to be one of those afternoons. But I think Reynolds will be disappointed with his accuracy from that kick because there was loads and loads of space there. Yeah, just put a little bit too much on it. And, you know, you can see the, the flags there on screen. There, there's virtually no wind here at all at Millbrae, so he can't really blame that. Just didn't quite catch it right. Interesting scrum though, Sam Graham's law. When I mean, you see him on, on screen there, just on the, the loose head side for Watsonians. I mean, he's, he's enormous and he seemed to have... I think he initiated, he, he sort of drove in. It looked maybe that the, uh, the Ayrshire Bulls had the upper hand, but I think it was, it was probably... Uh, actually, Graham's law that, that that was in charge of what was happening there. So, be an interesting scrum here for the Ayrshire Bulls. He's a he's a big man, and for a prop as well, he's he's very very tall, and very powerful. And he's going to be testing this Ayrshire Bulls pack here. But the Bulls get the nudge on, and the ball's spilled out there. So it's came back on a Bulls side. As Jordan opts to truck it up. Now the ball, the Bulls enjoying some period with the, the ball in hand because apart from the try after five minutes they've been under a bit of pressure but they get the ball wide now in, into the hands of Lu Lewis McNamara now found Robert Beattie but the referee is going to pull that back and it was an opportunity there for the Ayrshire Bulls to, to try and take advantage of uh, some disjointed Watsonians defence but fortunately for the visitors that's been pulled back by the referee Similar to what we said before with Watsonians who pulled the ball out the back of their forward pod and it, it just didn't work quite right there. It was much slicker from, from the Bulls and, and they got it into the wide channels and it looked like there was space and it was a really important tackle uh, but from Carol Main and Lewis Berg that dislodged the ball because it was looking very dangerous for the Ayrshire Bulls. Carol Main and Seb Cecil and Ian Moody in the back row for Watsonians. A very experienced uh, back Crunch. row with the, with the likes of Moody, but Seb Cecil is another player who's having a Find. an excellent campaign in the Fos Rock Super Six Point Series. Another scrum, and another scrum that comes to fruition, and it's Moody just bursting off of the back of the the scrum there, supported by Berg. And now Brand back into the 22 finds Miller, and he wants to kick centre field, but it's been well watched there by Shedden. The flyer from Mark, who scored a hat-trick on debut against Mel against Southern Knights down in Melrose a fortnight ago. And a good campaign in the Premiership with Mar as well, as they eventually ended up the, the Premiership winners. Now McNamara. He's found Jordan. And again, Jordan's just tasked with trying to punch the ball up, but he's been stripped there by what's own ends as the bodies now pile in. The referee will have a keen eye on this one to see if that ball can come back. And no, they stole it. The referee very clear in his communication there as well, but good defence from Watsonians. They never really looked in too much trouble, and they managed to wrap up Jordan well and get the ball back on their side. Yeah, the Watsonians' defence seemed to be in control of that situation. It's interesting, though, and maybe in contrast to what I suggested, or maybe expected in terms of the, the Ayrshire Bulls' approach. To, uh, to the game, they're, they're the team that are trying to, to go wide and actually doing it pretty effectively. Let's say on that occasion, Watsonian's defence up to the task. Same again. Same again. Graham's law having to duck down pretty low to get underneath the, the arms of Cal Davis, the, the vice captain. He's had two man of the match 
our player of the match performances so far in this Christ. campaign. The 29-year-old hooker. Find. It was a great pick-up by Moody from the, the last scrum. Run straight at Christian Townsend, probably wishing his back row had made the tackle. And Brand loitering at the back of the scrum just finds Curry. The player who's been released by Edinburgh. And more comfortable in the centre, but can play wing as well and manages to they can't play the ball because you're there. some good territory there. And the referee awarding the penalty to what's own ends and in these games of fine margins, this is going to be an interesting decision because we've seen a lot of teams kick to the corner, want to get the tries because they, they know it's a sprint series, but this is a, an interesting game management decision from, for what Sonians to have. Well, it looks like they've opted to go for post, so that tells you the respect they've got for their opponents here. Take every, every possible point that's on offer. Again, interesting from the, the scrum, you know, they, they could have tried to be more expansive but you've got a player like Matt Curry in the wing why not just give him the ball and say well, well have a go get us on the, the front foot and then it gives them something to play away from in the event it, it didn't come to that because the the penalty was conceded by the Ayrshire Bulls There's now a chance for Lee Miller to stretch the Watsonians advantage with a very very challenging kick He struck it well has been well watched there by the assistant referees, but they raised their flag, and it's a successful kick again for Lee Miller. And that is exactly what he brings to this team, isn't it? He's, he's got that experience, but his goal-kicking abilities are excellent. Yeah, I mean, he, he brings an awful lot more than that. You're, you're right, but uh, you expect him. Even with that, it's fairly challenging. It, was, it wasn't ever going to be too difficult in terms of the, the direction, but... Um, yeah, you just expect him to kick those, and his teammates likewise. And when you're making decisions like that, do we? I mean, no, he's the captain; he can make the decision himself. But when you're deciding, well, do we or do we not? You can, you can, with a fair amount of certainty, say yes, have a go. Yes, yeah, your Bulls play back underway, and it's up. Outside. Collected expertly it by it, Moody. It. Inside is 22. Taken back in. Use it. Still in. No. The referee Let's just instructing the Watsonians players as to exactly what his thoughts are on the collection there but Brand makes some good territory there the try scorer for the Ayrshire Bulls Liam McNamara gathers that step, well and step. makes a few yards as he trucks the ball up now the cavalry arrive ball for the there. Bulls to try and entice this Watsonians defence a little bit tighter to try and get these gaps in good carry by Lewis McNamara Townsend now finding shed in He's been wrapped up well by Berg. Advantage knock on. And now the Elias Caven, who's starting in place of Aaron Tate, has to try and twist and weave his way out of trouble, but the ball does come back on a you know, Bull side. Who's there? Bloodworth. Use it. On his first down. real carry three, in this three, game. Three, three. Stop. And what's trying back. to make a menace of themselves at the breakdown, but Ayrshire sure Bulls do well to gather that. And it's been well taken there by Brand. There. Perhaps the smallest man on the pitch, and he manages to pluck that ball from the sky and get it back on a Watsonian side. Still in, still in. He recycles himself. The one booted brand on. now as he's lost a little bit of his footwear. It's, knock on the floor. And it's a knock on from Watsonians, and it's getting a little bit scrappy in terms of a lot of errors coming into the game. Um, but Watsonians will be the happier of the two teams. No doubt, just need to look at the scoreboard to, to see that with the advantage you said about how difficult it is to play down here at, at Millbrae. It was initially good work by Lee McNamara across on the, the this side of the pitch uh, from the, the Watsonians kick had to fight his way forward and then he went through two or three phases. I'm impressed by Christian Townsend, the way he picks his options. We spoke about Watsonians and, and at times maybe being a little bit predictable as to which option they were going to take. I think Christian Townsend less so. He, he used the two runners in the midfield and then they, they went wide but they were they were going backwards and decided that um, the best plan of attack was to, to kick the ball and it was man and shot Rory Brand that took it, lo losing his boot in the process. I thought that's what the, the frisbee was, I thought he was having a diva moment, I thought he was getting his boot put back on for him, but I think in the process of losing his boot, he's taking a stamp on the ankle, so surely, just making sure he's okay. Surely at Super 6 level, somebody comes on to put your boots back on for you, do they not? You would hope so, you would hope so, but he's uh, back with two boots now, and the captain 
And Blair McPherson getting strapped up as well. It's starting off really good, and the last scrum's obviously been awesome. So keep it the same. And that is one thing about the scrums in Super 6, the referee, Johnny Perry, I'm just explaining that he's happy. They've been pretty good. You know, this is semi-professional, stroke professional rugby, and you know, they bring that level of accuracy to the to the set piece. Yeah, we're, we're not getting loads and loads of resets. I shouldn't say that because we'll get a reset here, but we, we've, we haven't. The, the, the scrummaging is good and pretty evenly matched here, the two teams. You know, that's another scrum which is going to come to fruition. And it's passed out the back. Now into the hands of McNamara. He was under a bit of pressure there from Guthrie, who just shot out of the line just to take man and ball. Now Tim Brown. Open side flanker. Ball back in the hands of Townsend. It's been juggled there by Jordan, but he does well to gather it. Andrew Nimmo finding himself in the, the backs as well, and acting as a, an anchor between the backs and forwards. Yeah, on that, yep. A bit of space found in the backfield, and that is an excellent kick there yeah, from the Ayrshire Bulls. It'll be interesting to see what position he kicked that yeah, from. 50 22, that is a brilliant kick yeah, from the Ayrshire Bulls. And, half, yeah, you know, that's one of the beauties of this new law is that it allows opportunities like this check. five metres now from the Watsonian's line, and it's an attacking line out for the Ayrshire Bulls. Not everybody likes this, but I, I like it, and I, I like the way that the Ayrshire Bulls are mixing up their, their attack. They're using their runners in the midfield. They're, they're pulling the ball out the back and, and going a little bit wider. They're, they're looking to be ambitious. They didn't quite get it right. I think Tom Jordan was it maybe Robert Beattie was running the, the blocker line and Tom Jordan looked to go behind him and uh, it didn't quite work. And the, the Watsonians' defence were able to, to flood through and look to, to shut it down. But uh, they're mixing things up nicely and the, the upshot is they've got a very good attacking position here. Maguire finds McNamara and now the, the Bulls look to try and charge their way over the line. The bodies flopped down. And I think they're just short of that line there. You can see the ball being presented back. And the Watsonians players try and flood in and make a nuisance of themselves as well. No, no, you're not coming from the back. You're not coming from the back. And infringing. So there's going to be a penalty to the Bulls. And I wonder whether they'll look to try and just stab this in the corner again. That you could see the Watsonians players just trying with all their might to get that ball back on their side. It looked like they'd almost managed. I was just listening to the referee's explanation there, saying the, the player hadn't come round from the back foot. I'm not sure how they brought the initial drive down legally. I'd like to see that one again as well, because in a position like that, you'd expect the Ayrshire Bulls just to, to drive that over. It's very difficult to defend, but they've got another crack at it. Maguire has to hit his target again. He does just that. And the Ayrshire Bulls get that cohesive mall formed again. You can see the well, only these players on the floor, but they opt to go through the backs now. And Cam Jones gets there quickly in Townsend. He now finds Beatty. He bounces into Joe Reynolds. And the Watsonians players not committing a lot of people to the breakdown as McPherson carries a couple of yards closer towards that Watsonians line. And it's a similar position where they got their opening score from. And now Cam Jones manages to find another big burly run around the sides. McPherson again, and twists his way out of contact, but he's been well snaffled round the ankles. And now Rory Jackson no, 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 no. tries to take a, a shot at the Watsonians' defence. Cam Jones does find Townsend, and Townsend throws the dummy and looks to try and dislodge the defence, but he's been wrapped up well, and now McPherson just charges straight into no, Reynolds. No, no. Thank There's a chance there for... A turnover, but, but Jones manages to throw the dummy in. There's a gap in the defence, and he goes over for a score for the Ayrshire Bulls. Opportunistic, but that is exactly what you see from a little wiry scrum half round the fringes. Throws that dummy in after the great work there from McPherson, and gets the score to tie things up here at Milbury. Same as before, Ayrshire Bulls just going through the phases and, and being patient. I was just about to say that Watsonian's defence was uh, was staying very organised there, but they just didn't get somebody in close enough to the, the breakdown there. And, and as close to the line as that, scrum halves will always be looking for a, a just a half a gap is all they need. And over went Cam Jones and I say Watsonians. They'll, they'll be. I think they, you could see the way they were looking as they folded around the corner. They were they were looking the defenders out a bit wider and just expecting play to keep going that way. And uh, and Cam Jones was alert. It. We'll maybe get another look at it and in a second just to see the the Watsonians' defence. But again, if you're patient and you go through phases, 
you know, defences are eventually going to going to break down. If you can go through eight, ten, twelve phases, defences get stressed, uh, and and then you just have to spot where the gaps are. And, and players of the quality of Cam Jones very good phases. at that. The man who didn't look stressed at all there was Christian Townsend, and he splits the Kinlan for his first successful conversion of the afternoon. Ayrshire Bulls now edge themselves into the lead, 12 points to 10. After good manipulation of the Watsonians' defence, you'd have to say, managing just to squeeze them into the stand side and then manipulate the gap. Lee Miller gets play back underway into the hands of Robert Beatty, who kicks downfield. He makes a reasonably good attempt of trying to get that downfield. A little shake of the head. I think he's perhaps a little bit disappointed with that, but it was a nice clear kick and gets play away from his 22. We'll see where the line out is again in a second. That, that, that looks, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just about on the on the 10 metre line. Teams, Lots of teams will, will set up a ruck there and go through one or two phases and try and get a, a better position, but actually they'll probably end up not kicking any further than that. And I, I think when, when it wasn't under a huge amount of pressure, I think he's right. You've not been very clear on numbers. They've got no idea. Okay. Thank you. I couldn't hear it, so they probably can't either. Thank you. Last organisation at the line out as Ball plucks it from the sky. Now Main. Van Niekirk now tasked with trucking the ball up to set the platform. Now Cecil. And he's been well marshalled there by the Ayrshire Bulls defence. Looking to try and keep the knees off the ground as well as he's been handbagged into that mall. And Ayrshire Bulls doing well just to swarm round that mall and get the ball round back on their side. And Seb Cecil, I don't think he'll be too happy with uh, Bloodworth who's... He's uh, gobbled him up there as he went into contact. Good work from the, 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 the both second rows from the, the Ayrshire Bulls. Fantastic work there, yes, just for, for anybody watching that doesn't quite follow what's happening there. If, if the defensive side can turn that into a mall uh, and the attacking side don't get the ball back, then the uh, defensive side, the Ayrshire Bulls on this occasion, get the, the put in to the scrum. And it was great work by both second rows, Van Yekirk, and in particular, I think Lewis Ball doing the hard work there. Um, f uh, sorry, Edward Bloodworth. Um, and, and Rory Jackson, Bloodworth, doing the hard work for Ayrshire Bulls there. And Seb Cecil, who's been impeccable this season. Set. Not quite, um, maybe carrying a little bit too high there. Ayrshire Bulls rolling at the Is scrum it? as Cam Jones casually makes his way to the, the rear of that pack. Hold, hold, Back hold. into the hands of Townsend yeah. and he's found some good space yet again. And it just trundles shy of the Watsonians 10 metre line. But yeah, I think the the two, as you can see, the try scorer Liam McNamara there, he's got the opening score here this afternoon. But you, the, the two second rows, Jackson and Bloodworth, line, great work in defence. But, you know, I think that's something that we see. Ball and Van Niekirk for Watsonians are a, a steady pairing as well. I'm sure one of them will perhaps be tasked with trying to get the ball from the line out. But it's, it's important to have second rows who can, you know, mix it up like back rows can as well nowadays. But let me get the thoughts of uh, Bruce Miller on that shortly. And it's Cecil from the line out. Back into the hands of Cal Davis. That's one, it's nine. The mall not making Four, stay there, don't move. much gain in territory as don't Brand move. is don't change. Don't change. eagerly no, watching don't change. the, the no, progress no. of this mall. Now in the hands of Brand and he sprints away from the set piece. Miller finds Berg. And he takes play up towards yep. the 10 metre line. Berg, who had a, a man of the match Tackle. performance in the win against Heriots, which was at Megatland. He got a couple of tries, which turned the tide of the game. They'll be looking for him to try and get his name on the score sheet as the kick goes downfield. The bouncing ball does end up in the hands of Shedden. And then the tall flyer now into the heart of Graham's lot, who gobbles him up. The Ayrshire Bulls now look to try and up the ante. The ball is spilled over at the far side. And Caven. He's now wrapped up and lifted off the ground with a good tackle from the Matt Curry. A good defender in his own right. Now Tenzin looks to try and chip over the defensive line. It's been well watched by Brand as he throws the dummy in and looks to go it alone. He finds Patterson. He looks to kick downfield, but it's came off the legs of a, an Ayrshire Bulls player. And it's going to go out to the field of play for a line out, but both teams testing and probing. They are, it's been a fantastic opening, almost half hour here, both sides really having a go in attack and I mentioned it earlier, Christian Townsend on 
on screen there, really mixing his options up well. There's a, a good kick just a couple of minutes ago where he kicked cross field and, and um, set up the, the or, or, or won some territory for his side. On that occasion, he saw just a little bit of space in behind the defensive line as they came up hard and just kicked it over the top. It was dealt with well by Rory Brand, but um, as I said earlier, he, he's really mixing it up nicely. He's using his runners, he's, he's trying to get the ball wide. Um, and, and they are see him kicking over the, the top and that just really keeps a defence on their toes so they're now thinking well can we come up quite as hard do we have to just you know hang back in, in case he, he does that again so uh, I've been I've been very impressed by Townsend in the, the opening stages of that one looks like a bit of treatment to Lewis Ball you, you were mentioning just before about the, the second rows and across all the Super 6 teams they're, they're very dynamic uh, I mean, there's a lot of youngsters. You totally were they were dynamic. They'll be less dynamic when they get to, to our age, Dale. But um, your age, maybe. Uh, well, uh, yes, actually, that's fair. Fair comment. But um, you, you'll see. I'm, I'm just thinking the, the game um, coming up later on. The the Heritage captain um, Leishman is Leishman. it? That, yeah. I mean, he, he started in the second row. He's moved to six. He's at eight today. They're capable of playing right across the back five positions. A lots of the, lots of these guys. Yeah, you look at the likes of Jackson, who's played in the the back row for Ayrshire Bulls so far this season. Moves up to the middle row this afternoon. Likewise for some of these Watsonians players, Ian Moody being one of them players, he just plucks it from the sky yet again. Another successful line out, that courtesy from Cal Davis has been impressive this afternoon. And half an hour gone here at Millbrae. And now into the hands of Curry. Curry's got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and he goes back on the inside. Some great broken field running here. He gets the offload into a supporting Cal Davis. And now Watsonians look to strike. Lee Miller floats the ball over to Patterson, coming at a rate of knots. Can he outstretch the Ayrshire Bulls defence? Gets the big fend in and gets the ball down. And that looks like it's a successful try. And what a try from Watsonians. Managed to get in behind the defensive line after some good broken play running from Matt Curry. And then the awareness of Lee Miller just to float that ball over the top. And you can see here into the hands of Curry. Manages to get back in field, but great support and play from... Cal Davis as well, the ball lifted into the hands of the vice captain, sets up the platform and this is when the tempo comes, Brand finds Miller and he just floats that ball up and manages to get past that blitz defence from the Ayrshire Bulls and Patterson goes in the corner. That's fantastic play all round from Watsonians back in their own in their own half. Rory Brand decided he was going to go blind, and and then Matt Curry. And when you've got as much pace as Watsonians have in their back three, it's absolutely terrifying for for a defence. And Matt Curry raced away up that stand side touchline, cut back inside it, and then it's the intensity that, that Watsonians bring. They're not willing to then let the ball die. They want to keep playing. They're bursting a, a, a gut to get there and support. I mean, Cal Davis, the the, the hooker was there to, to take the pass, I think, from Curry and then Lee Miller as the defence came up and tried to cut off his options. He, he knew that he just threw the ball over the top. Harry Patterson was coming on at space and uh, and that is really a, a, a fantastic team effort from Watsonians. Lee Miller not able to draw that ball round enough to get it between the, the, the posts. Harry Patterson was right coming on at space and, just and, uh, and going that's towards really the right-hand side a, a of those fantastic posts. Fantastic team effort. So it's Ayrshire Bulls, 12. Watsonians 15, and it's certainly a bit of a ding-dong of a battle. We spoke about the change at half-back for Watsonians, and would be would that be disruptive? Rowan Frostwick should have started. Rory Brand coming off the bench. Well, he's been absolutely superb, and, and uh, I think it's been instrumental in, in both of the Watsonians' tries so far. Townsend with the kick to get play back underway. And it is uh, Moody and Brand who embrace briefly in the 22, but the ball is secure. Use it! I do agree with the the influence of Brand so far in this game I, I perhaps wasn't Use it! I wasn't too convinced with his performance against Heriot I think there was a couple of occasions where he was he was maybe trying to do too much but here he's looking a lot more balanced front, hold, hold. as he passes the ball yeah, back to on. Lee Millett he kicks downfield McNamara has found McPherson who's got Townsend in support and now Caven who's been kept quiet on that stand side so far this afternoon at Millbrae. Another big carry from Ayrshire Bulls has been met with some stern Watsonians defence. And again, looking just to go direct. And Watsonians certainly matching them pound for pound in the, the physical battle. As the ball's ghosted across to Shedden. He tries to evade Brand, but he does well to punch above his body weight and take the big man down. 
Now Maguire, a player who was very industrious in the game against Southern Knights as well, got around the park well, but Ayrshire Bulls under a bit of pressure and defensively from Watsonians and knocked the ball on and you can see the frustration from the Bulls as they cough up cheap possession. Lewis McNamara, the player knocking on under a little pressure really, he'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, Watsonians' defence has been excellent, we've spoken about the physicality that the Ayrshire Bulls bring but some of the hits from Watsonians have been superb and, and they're not racing off the line there but they're coming up very connected so it doesn't present any obvious opportunities to, to the Ayrshire Bulls and then when they, they opt to carry they're often getting two men into the tackle but even though it's just one they're, they're really hitting hitting hard and yes they've conceded a, a couple of tries um, but I think they were probably just slight sort of system system errors and, and the fact that for the, the second one and the, the first one it was just the, the Bulls went through so many phases and got the ball into that into that wide channel the, the tries have essentially came from physicality you feel that both teams are really going hammer and tongue at each other which is allowing the gaps because a lot of these games it's difficult to find gaps at Super 6 but it seems that because the both teams are trying to play physically the gaps are appearing and it's Brand who's from the scrum he's putting a good attacking kick downfield Kevin done well to, to gather that and find his full back McNamara and he's relieved the pressure temporarily but the physical battle between these two teams and all the teams at Super 6 the, it has gone up a notch it is, these guys are, are really really good athletes and I think the physicality between two teams has perhaps drawn the defences in a little bit Patterson's two tries have been because of the gaps in defence Cam Jones got his try because of the gap around the fringes and McNamara similarly there was, there was a space out wide yeah, for me, this is a big step up from okay, so club rugby. And that's nothing against club rugby, but I mean, because that's what—that's th one of the reasons this competition is put together. It should be it should be better. I, I know there are those who, who believe that uh, that club rugby could do the same job. But I say, in many areas, and physicality being one of them, this is a, a notch up. And this is a, another physical battle as the mall is formed from the line out. And what's of have had a, a bit of fruition from this sort of set piece throughout the campaign, which sees them sitting top. After four games now, Brand at the back to Miller and there's a gap there as Curry is through. Curry's got some support, but is he going to go it alone? He manages to evade the defence and get over for a score. Straight off of the first phase ball, they bring the big six foot three centre off of his wing and he manages to pick the gap and power over the line. Great play yet again from Watsonians. And from the line out there, just sent a blocker runner in again just to, to hold the defence. But it was all about Curry's speed, but his, his footwork as well, absolutely superb there. Just sliced through the defence. You can see Brand there just with the ball. The ladies pass nicely. It was Berg that ran that short line in out there to, to Lee Miller. Just bamboozled the defence, ball back inside. And that, remember, came, we spoke about Rory Brand, his influence on the match. The position came from his kick from his own half. Um, and it, and it, uh, he won the kick in Jewel Ayrshire Bulls return not making an awful lot of ground, gave Watsonians a fantastic attacking position and, it, uh, and, and uh, great interplay there, keeping it fairly the tight. Return, there's there's, there's often a, a, a zone ground. that, that you, you get there just quite close to the, where the, the, you know, from the line out and they form them all and there's often just a, a zone there that you can, you can attack uh, and Watsonians did it absolutely beautifully there. Yeah, Lee Miller, Lee Miller getting the extras as well, but when we, I think when we dissect that at half time, I think if you watch the, the line from Berg going to Tim Brown, I think you'll see that's where the, the space does appear. And now Townsend to try and salvage something from this first half to keep the game nipped up, but it has uh, been knocked on by the Bulls. And it's fallen into the bread basket of Berg. Here's the referee instructing Brand to use the ball. Use and uh, he does just that because he finds Onside, Lewis ball guys. from the breakdown. Nine, nine, to try and control it, the game nine. as they approach half time. Yeah, he was on. And I think five, Brand five, has uh, really hit the ground running in this game. He's certainly shown the promise that a lot of people were excited by his uh, arrival at Meyerside. He's certainly shown glimpses of that this afternoon. What's on ends from the kick chase, set up that good defensive line, but now the Ayrshire Bulls look to strike and go on the blind side, and Cam Jones has split the defence, looks to try and go round the last defender, but when he's offloading, it's just fallen into the hands of a What's on ends player, and that was dangerous from the Ayrshire Bulls, and yet again, anything Brand can do, Cam Jones has shown that he wants to have an impact in this game as well. 
a kick downfield into the hands of Liam McNamara. Got the opening points in this game. Nine, hold, nine. They've been kept quiet hold. since then. Nine. That's a good kick, nine. good clearance kick downfield into nine. the Watsonians half, nine. and nine. Ayrshire Bulls trying really hard to, to get themselves back into this okay. game. You see Cam Jones there, a couple of forwards just down on their on, on their knees there, and he had to run round them. And Carl Davis, the Watsonians hooker and vice captain, had a fantastic season, but he, he didn't quite get that right in defence and left the gap for Cam Jones and he just he shot through it, looked for support and I think if the offload had, had gone to hand it would have been um, it would been much more dangerous for the Watsonians defence there but as it was it went to deck and, and it was it was picked up by the Bulls but the Watsonians defence had, uh, had, had a chance to, to organise themselves a little bit and get men back but um, yeah the, both sides finding gaps in the, the opposition defence. I think it's always interesting before these games you look down the team sheet and try and pick out the battles and, and see where they are and you know a lot of the times you look at the wingers and you look at the half backs of the back row but certainly that number nine battle this afternoon has been very well fought between Brand and Jones because you would, you would argue they've been the standout players for both sides. I think that's a fair point and we didn't, we didn't pick them out at the start but uh, they're, they're certainly giving their side lots in this, uh, in this first half a minute to go to half time. Now Davis at the back of the mall. He's uh, also won the penalty, and the mall still has a little bit of a, a bite to it as it trucks towards that 10 metre line. The penalty's coming for Watsonians. And they look to play with the free ball and look to get Berg released. Now they've released Lee Miller. Lee Miller's got Brandon support, and it looks like he's going to get his try. And from the free ball, Watsonians look to play rugby, and they release the scrum half who we've been praising so highly in this first half. And he goes in for yet another score for Watsonians. And it's uh, been a, a good afternoon, for certainly for the Watsonians' backs. But it's a, a score for the scrum half from a free ball from the penalty. I mean, it came from the work by the forwards there, making great ground with the drive. Then back it came and we said Watsonians sometimes hasn't quite worked for them um, when they've maybe looked over complicated there. They just went really simple. Lee Miller giving it to Lewis Baird, getting them on the front foot and then they, uh, they offload. We've spoken about him. Rory Brand, very deserving of a try and it's his side's fourth try as they have built themselves a, a fairly healthy looking lead that I, I think probably in the build-up to this game we didn't expect to see. No, we certainly didn't. Um, it's uh, been a, a very professional approach to this first half by the visitors Watsonians. And 27 points to 12, the try bonus there from Brand, which has uh, huge implications on the the table for the split, with uh, another game still to come, following this one, and Lee Miller, the orchestrator of that try, adds the two points as well as it takes us to half time, and half time score is Ayrshire Bulls 12, Watsonians 29. And uh, that man Brand, as he's uh, trudging down the tunnel, I think he's certainly arrived on the Super 6 scene. This has been a, an impeccable performance from the scrum half. Yeah, I, I agree with you. you. You said in commentary about his performance against Herricks. I thought he started that game really well and he made a couple of mistakes. I think one of them led to a, a Herricks try um, and, and he just sort of drifted out the, the game. He was replaced later on, which in contrast today, he's just been absolutely superb, pulling all the, all the strings uh, he, he certainly had plenty of help and he's got experienced players like Lee Miller uh, round about him. Lewis Berg, I think, has been excellent again in the in the first half here and, and his forwards have given him a, a very easy ride. I mean, you saw that last try that he scored himself there. That was from a fantastic forward drive. But uh, for me, Rory Brand has been the, the pick of the bunch in that first half. They're very apt that he was the man who finished the scoring in the first half, but it was uh, Ayrshire Bulls who came out of the traps early on. Although the scoreline doesn't reflect uh, perhaps the way that they started the game, it was Liam McNamara who got the first score with a, a lovely ball over the top there from Jordan after the, the defence had been sucked in and the fullback got the opening score. Yeah, we're just seeing the end of it, but that came from great work by the, the forwards. I, I think it was from a line out over on the far side of the pitch there that uh, they, they didn't quite get right, but they just went through phase after phase after phase and uh, eventually all that just, it just sucks the defence in and they, uh, they found the space out wide. The second score came from the fullback Patterson from some cute hands from the, the Watsonians' backs, just releasing the fullback. And he went in for uh, the first of his two scores in the first half, but again, just accurate play from the Watsonians' backs. Yeah, I'm just giving a, another chance to look at the 
the Ayrshire Bulls defence there because they said they'd be disappointed. They seemed to just get caught very flat-footed as the, the ball got um, shoveled along that Watsonia's line. But the injection of pace from Harry Patterson when you're standing, you know, when you're rooted to the spot as a defender, there's no way you're going to react to uh, to that. So good line by by Patterson. Uh, Bulls defence, though, I think will still be a little disappointed. Lee Miller got the conversion and then nudged them in fr further in front with a, another penalty from long range. This one, as you can see, the ball just sailing between the sticks and it gave them a, a, a five point to ten advantage. But the Ayrshire Bulls did come back at them and it was uh, Cam Jones, who's perhaps been the, the, one of the pick of the bunches for the, the Ayrshire Bulls. He just sniped round the fringes after again some good works from the forwards. Yeah, great work by the forwards. You see the, the Watsonians defenders folding round the corner. You see the, the Seven and eight have just gone a little bit wider there, and um, there's, there's probably one of them or somebody else should have come round and filled in that gap right beside the breakdown. Nobody did, and, and they, um, they were made to pay by Cam Jones. That edged the Ayrshire Bulls in front, but then back came Watsonians yet again. Matt Curry just breaking from his own half, just going back on the inside of Cavan. He was eventually brought down to ground, but Cal Davis, again, the, with his... Uh, his engine that he has was in support and Lee Miller just cut out the on Russian defence and Patterson went in for his second score of the afternoon in the corner, just fending off Shedden and squeezing in just in the corner. Great team effort there. Um, you know, you even see like well, Carl Davis in support, Lewis Ball working hard to, to run a line there to suck in the defence. But we're, we're come back. We'll get another look at this one, in fact, because this is probably the, the most interesting of them all. Yeah, it was Curry who managed to go in for a score here and you can see that the line here from Berg you're going to just see him just take Tim Brown completely out of the game and this is where the gap arrives yeah that was both sides have been using that I, I mean I would call that a, a blocker play um I don't mean in any way that the, you know obviously they're trying to, to block the defense just the the description for the um that option where you go out behind the, the player running that short line and Lewis Berg did it wonderfully well there and Watsonian's just uh Working in not an awful lot of space there, but uh, ripping the Ayrshire Bulls defence to shreds. Yeah, and again, the porous Bulls defence was exploited yet again. Good work from Berg and Miller, who linked up, and the Rory Brand f fan club was out in full force as he went in for a score after what has been a really impressive first 40 minutes for the, the scrum half. A late replacement for Rowan Frostwick, but he got the score, which uh, put an exclamation mark on uh, Watsonian's dominance in the first half and the, the successful conversion from Lee Miller, did take the half-time score to the Ayrshire Bulls at 12, Watsonians Rugby at 29, and it's certainly been an action-packed first half here at Millbrae. And uh, it does give us a little bit of time, because during the week we did go to, we were at Millbrae to speak to the Ayrshire Bulls head coach, uh, Pete Horn, about his first season in charge of the team after he took over from Pat MacArthur at the tail end of last year, and we also spoke to the Scotland Under-20 standoff, Christian Townsend, about his second year with the Bulls, and he tells us how he's playing in the Ford Rock Super 6 and how it supported his development as a player. I've loved my time here. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. We've got a great club, really good support staff. Um, and I'm really lucky, like the players that we've got, we've got such a, an aspirational, committed group. You know, the guys are just desperate to turn up and enjoy themselves and, and get better, which is, uh, yeah, it's all you can ask for as a coach. So I've, uh, I've loved working with a group of players. And like you said, we've been lucky enough that we've had a little bit of success, but it's off the back, of, you know, real hard work. It's been a big development uh, journey for me. Yeah, I think in the past, all my experience was as an assistant coach where I wasn't, you know, I'd maybe be dropping in a couple of nights a week but I wouldn't have a massive influence on selection and things it was very much you know I'd be in and trying to be upbeat and bring a bit of energy do some drills and and things but you could kind of be mates with all the boys and it was uh, it was easier it was a different dynamic whereas now it's a lot more professional I think it's it's still vitally important that you build really good relationships with the guys and I like to think that that's something that you yeah, have done but it's, it's great just having a lot more time to really focus on you know building a, a culture on on trying to work hard as a as a coach to improve yourself, to take learnings from sort of, you know, really reflect on what's gone well, what's not going well, get feedback and yeah, I've 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 loved it. That's something that always has been really like close to my heart, bringing through the, the young Scottish fellas and you know it was the reason I got into coaching in the first place. Uh, I started doing a fair bit with Hawks like years ago and yeah I loved like seeing you know good young Scottish boys coming through and doing well. Like Ross Thompson's a prime example. We got him straight out of school and 
Um, done a bit of work with him down at, at Hawks for a couple of seasons and it's great to see him now kicking on and doing so well. And Yeah, I've been absolutely loving it. I've got no doubt that there's some guys in this group here that are, are going to go on to have some you know, brilliant, really good futures in the pro game. And you know, Again, like I've got no doubt there'll be some of them pulling on Scotland jerseys and that'll be really cool to know that you've played, like, albeit a very small part in, in their journey, but you know, you've been there and given them a little bit of support. I think it's the it's been a brilliant tool. Like already, the you'll see the the quality of the games is is getting better. Like we said, the, the amount of analysis we're trying to train, you know, as as close to professional intensity as we can. We've got a lot of guys coming down from the pro game to to play uh, to train with us. You know, academy guys and um, there's some ex pros in in our squad and things. You know, so the standards that they're setting are really high. And um, although we're asking a lot, like they just soak it up, they lap it up and, and it's great. Like you said, now the physicality is at a much higher level than it was. You know, consistently, in the club game, I think there was, you know, week to week, there'd be certain games that were really physical, whereas now, you know, you see with the amount of injuries as well, but the collisions every week and every match are way bigger. So, uh, oh, it's definitely serving its purpose and fingers crossed we'll see a lot of uh, positive success stories from young guys doing really well off the back of it. In your second year with the Bulls now, how do you feel your time here in the Falls Rock Super Six has supported your development as a player? It's allowed me to get some, some good game time at a pretty high level um, with a good, good bunch of boys and a good coaching setup. It's really allowed me to push on. Obviously this season you've got Pete Horn as your head coach here at Bulls. Um, he's someone who's played at the highest level himself. How important is that for you and what do you feel like you're learning working with someone like that? Pete's, Pete's a great coach, especially with him having played a um, bit of 10, a bit of inside centre, understands the game really well and uh, as a 10 myself helps me connect with him even more. Just that game understanding um, and that tactical element of the game really helps and uh, he likes the boys to play a bit so I feel that means we've got a, a good balance in our attack, physicality up front but lots of pace out in the backs as well. I, I guess both individually and as that collective squad with another tournament coming up, how do you feel playing in this Super 6 Sprint Series has helped prepare you for that? The main thing is, is just game time, because um, there's nothing like running out into the pitch. You can, you can train, but you never quite get, get the same as, as playing games. So to have as many boys as we have done playing this has been really good. And just lastly, there's one more game to go before the split in the Super 6 Sprint Series, then later this summer it's in the Championship. What are your hopes, both individually and for those of the squad? Hopefully I can play as big a part as possible in the, the remainder of the, the season with the Bulls and, and we can win, win the Sprint Series. And under 20s wise, again, try and play, play in all the games, play a big role and get some wins there too. So that was uh, Christian Townsend and Pete Horn, and it allows us a little chance to have a look at two of the, the best scores in the first half. This was the one from Watsonians, Matt Curry breaking away from the scrum down the stand side and manages to release Cal Davis. But the pass here from Lee Miller just delaying the pass and just cutting out Robert Beatty as the ball floats over the side and Harry Patterson went in for his second score of the afternoon. But it, it wasn't the only impressive score because this one here, Bruce, was... Was, uh, was excellent because the ball came down and it was uh, Cal Davis who again set up the platform and uh, Watsonians again knocking at the door just before half time Please. and he managed to, to find Brand eventually when the ball did work its way out of the mall and great line there from Berg eventually did release uh, Matt Curry but we'll get a chance to look at that at the end of the game, because we've still got 40 minutes Inside. of rugby left here at Milbrae. It's currently Ayrshire Please Bulls 12, nine. Watsonians 29. And play is back underway, and it's uh, back in the hands and then to the foot of one of the the key men in the first half, Rory Brand. But, you know, that, that try there from, uh, from Watsonians, it did highlight everything that was good about their first half play. 
Yes, and, and two quite different tries. That one, they, they attacked very tight, close to the... Well, it was a mall, I think, came from the, the line-out. The other one was out, out wide. And, and that first one we looked at there, I was just so impressed by their, their desire to score. Once the break had been made by Matt Curry, the work of the forwards, Carl Davis to support uh, and take the offload, but then Lewis Ball to give an, an option to uh, to Lee Miller in the midfield, just helped hold the defence and, uh, and made the space for Harry Patterson out wide. And now the Ayrshire Bulls look to try and go through beat it. As they look to try and come out the trap straight away in this second half as they look to claw something back from this game. They've got 17 points to try and turn around. It's a, a big margin, but it's certainly not impossible. And they now look to go against the grain and Townsend. Invasive footwork. It's, it's not been able to confuse a Watsonian's defence. And now Tim Brown. Look at the puncture a hole in the, the Watsonian's defence, but again the defensive line holding strong. And Beatty going laterally across that 10 metre line does manage to offload. And now McNamara, who got the opening score in the game, is to try and introduce himself back into the second half. And now a big run there from Michael Scott. He's uh, got one man to beat, tries to get the offload, but will the bouncing ball end up in the hands of a Bulls player? But it's just drifted forward. And Scott, who started the game brilliantly in the first half, he had five minutes, he was he was everywhere. He, he certainly found a second win, burst through the defence there, but just not able to get the pass away. Yes, I mean, the the defence, I, I think you just said it in commentary, and I was about to say the same. The Watsonian's defence has been superb. They're not racing up, they're, but they're just staying really connected and making some enormous hits, but, but it just fell off a tackle there. I think it was it was probably Sam Graham's law, the, the Edinburgh pro, that missed that, and Angus Williams was alongside him and just never, never got his timing right at all, and it just allowed Michael Scott to burst through the tackle there. He was looking for, for support, and... Uh, I suppose that's maybe a prop's worst nightmare, having to give a nice little delicate offload and it didn't quite work. There was nobody right there on the spot for him uh, and uh, a wasted opportunity. But they do have Watsonians penned back in their own try line and Ayrshire Bulls have got to be the next side to score, there's no doubt about it. So they have to keep them down here, keep the pressure on. The pressure comes on from the scrum. And it's a good scrum there from the Ayrshire Bulls. It'll be interesting to see if Ian Moody has done brilliant work at the back of that scrum to get that ball back because the, the hammer was coming down from the Bulls. And Reynolds is clearing downfield. And I think uh, Michael Scott, I think his worst nightmare was the fact that he broke the defensive line. I think props don't like trying to charge in from the 22 when they've got a man to beat. But I think he's been, you know, he's, be, he's been really good. Plays his, played his rugby out of uh, GHA. There was 122 kilograms of, of physical specimen just charging down on the Watsonian's line, but just not able to find that pass. Yeah, it was unfortunate because he'd, he'd done all the, the hard work, fantastic play from the, the tight head prop, but they're still, they're still down here. Looking at the other side, Ian Moody, that's what you get from him. He's maybe not, I mean, what is he, 33, I think now, probably. Um, so, I mean, he's been a fantastic player. Started out at, at Berwick, spent some time at, at Kelso, at Melrose and Southern Knights, and now finds himself at, at Watsonian. So, maybe not quite, uh, didn't carry the ball quite as much as he used to, but he's, we've seen him in defence today, making some big hits and two really important pickups from the, the base there with a retreating scrum. And he got his side back in the, the front foot again. And earlier in the, the first half, he, he picked and he went um, straight at... Christian Townsend and made 10 metres or so, so still a, a fantastic player and as a line-out option there are a few better. He's, he's really developed over time, it is, his time at Berwick, I used to play against against them at Colts in district rugby, we played together and he, he's, he's adapted his game a lot as he's got older and the Ayrshire Bulls now look to try and test this Watsonian's defence and it is that man Moody who gets across to cover the space. You know, another big carry there from McPherson. As he charges round the corner and just bounces his body into the Watsonians' defence. The pressure looks to come on from Watsonians, but the Asher Bulls do well to get back on their side. You can see there the introduction of Aaron Tate as well, replacing Liam McNamara for a, I think it was a, a head injury. Free ball for the Asher Bulls to play with, and Brown picks, goes one way, then comes the other, and he's run straight into the clutches of Graham's Law, who wraps the ball up, but is going to come back for the penalty to the Ayrshire Bulls. Five, roll. Three tackles by Seb Cecil in quick succession Five, there. He's been a bit roll. quieter this afternoon. One of my picks over the last few weeks for, for one of the best players in the competition. Big man, all the way. You can see them. Yeah, yes. trying to hold up in him and Graham's lot. Yeah, Cecil has been, I think, every game that I've, I've been involved with, the, the Watsonians have been playing, and he's been one of the standout players. On the line, please. On the line, please. 
You mentioned you played a bit with Ian Moody. How come you're sitting here and, and he's still playing Super Six Rugby, Dale? <laughs> Good question. Um, I was never up to the standard of Ian Moody. Good line out from Ayrshire Bulls again. Bloodworth, the player to secure the ball, and it's starting to filter its way back into the hands. As you can see, Moody just swimming through the mall there, make a nuisance of himself, and that is great defensive work at the mall from Watsonians. That's why I'm sitting here and Ian Moody's there. Do you think you could have done that? that would, I mean, right on cue, we mentioned his qualities as a player. And you, you saw it there, he got his timing right, he just charged into it, came through, you heard the referee saying that he'd come through the middle. You can see him working hard there to, to fight his way through, does it legally, and drags down what looked like a, a certain score. And the Ayrshire Bulls, that, that's been a real strength for them, that driving line out. And they just seem to have lacked a clinical edge at it in, in a number of the games. That game they lost against Stirling County. If they'd taken all their opportunities from kicks to the corner, they would have won that game quite comfortably. But they couldn't. They couldn't do it. And and in their, I think it was at their next game they were they were the same. They just wasted two or three. It was against Heriot. They wasted two or three opportunities, and they've done the same twice today, which is very unlike them. A little bit of inaccuracy from the Bulls, but praise must go to what's on ends for the defensive Set. effort as well at the. At the mall, it's such a weapon for teams to have a, a very potent attacking mall. And the scrum comes on again and under a bit of pressure in that front row, but the Watsonians doing well to get that back on their side and working really, really hard on the floor to secure that ball. And defensively again, Ayrshire Bulls. Ayrshire Bulls. Bursting out the line there, putting pressure on the, the Watsonians it's clearly ball carrier. Touchdown. And you can see here just what pressure Watsonians were under. You yeah, just trying to see numbers. Michael Scott in there, we spoke about him just a moment or two ago, bursting through an attack. Great work in defence. I can't see, I think it was one of his front row mates that was alongside him, just driving the, uh, the Watsonian side. As they, they basically picked up from the scrum again, Ian Moody. I thought he maybe should have come the other way on that occasion because the scrum had, had wheeled, but um, he, he went round the other way and was tackled behind the gain line, which is then always difficult. And Watsonian's just looking to, to go through another phase or two to set up a, a better position for the kick, but they never got round to that because the Ayrshire Bulls' defence was very aggressive, drove them back. Great work there by the, the front row. And Ayrshire Bulls always said they, they, need to, they need to keep the pressure on, keep Watsonians down here, and they need to at some point come up with a, a score. Totally Ian Moody just taking a knock there from picking up, I think, at, uh, at the base of that scrum. Okay. Liam McNamara has returned to the field of play as well for the Ayrshire Bulls. Obviously been patched up and Aaron Tate will return to his seat on the bench. You would imagine if he does come onto the field of play, he's going to have a bit of a say in how this game is going to be played. Five tries already as he sits proudly on top of the, the try scoring uh, charts after four rounds. But it's an attacking scrum for the Bulls. And Bruce Miller did say that the Bulls must score next to make a game of it. And this is a, a brilliant opportunity. You can see behind the scrum, Jordan Beatty just loitering. And shedding off his wing as well. A secure scrum from the Bulls. And it's McPherson who picks and goes. Cecil is there in support, so is Ian Moody. But he gets over the line and the referee indicating that he's been held up. Again, defensive effort from Watsonians is excellent because a man like Blair McPherson, the captain leading from the front, he's a hard man to stop from close quarters. Yeah, great drive. Watch Cam Jones there trying to look casual. He's, they knew exactly what was happening. He's looking round, speaking to the other backs, suggesting that he's, he's maybe going to go that way. And he knew all along Blair McPherson because the scrum was in a perfect position for them. They had all, all the space in the world to, to charge into and uh, great defensive work yet again by Watsonians. Every member of that Watsonians back row was there. You can see when Guthrie gets bounced off, you've got Cecil. And then Moody comes in and then Main comes in. That is excellent work from the back row. And that's exactly what you want them to be doing. That is, you know, the, the, the energy for, you would say there, for Carl, Carl Main to get off from his side, to get round to hold up that ball. That's, that's really good work, rate. Yeah, we'll maybe get another look at that as well. Yeah, but that desire, I mean, they've got a very healthy lead, but they know that if they let Ayrshire Bulls back into this now, if they give them a score, they'll come back down again and they'll come back down again. They'll be under a huge amount of pressure. So it's really important for Watsonians that they preserve that lead. You're absolutely right. The, the back row, they'll say their willingness to, to work hard and, and make tackles being dividends for the side, and of course now it's a, a goal line dropout, so no attacking scrum for the Bulls. Lee Miller, 
Makes some good territory there into the hands of Shedden. He finds McNamara now with his uh, headband on. Now beat it. He bounces round one, looks to find Jordan. He bounces back in field and returns the ball to Beatty. Great offload off the deck, finds Jones, but he's been well marshalled by Main. But the referee deeming that a, a high tackle on the scrum half. Now Townsend. He's found Jordan again, who just goes direct. Looks to try and truck it up. And it's evaded the clutches of Townsend there. So the referee will bring that back for the penalty for the high tackle on Jones, but... Good defensive scramble from the Watsonians, but Ayrshire Bulls getting through just the phases, managing to get the ball through the hands. And this is a great example of trying up. to use all the backs, keep the ball alive and get the ball out of contact from especially the centres. Robert Beattie there, the man in, in possession. He's been quite quiet. Glasgow Warriors player, he's, he's spent time at uh, London Irish, I think it was, and with the Scotland Sevens, real quality player. Um, but he's been kept quiet by the Watsonians defence today, but you just see when he gets a little bit of space there and he's, he's you know, he, he's very calm when in possession, little ball over the top, he got the return pass, I think he had the ball in his hands three times in, in that uh, that right little contact. spell sure there, the and the if the Ayrshire Bulls back, can get him a little bit more involved in, in both their centres, it'll maybe uh, work for them, but a chance from the line-out again. Maguire, big burly hooker. The Ayrshire Bulls have a lot of depth at hooker. And he takes his habitual position at the back of the mall as Ian Moody looks to swim okay, through go, yet go, again. Go, go, go. No, leave it, leave it. doing well to disrupt that mall, but it's still got some go forward and it starts to get the momentum now. There. He, there. Ian Come Moody on, flying on. through the top of that mall. He's ground to a halt. And now Jones finds Scott. He's been well defended by the Watsonians defence and Jones now pops it in at the hands of Bloodworth. He has a little bite at the Watsonians defence and Jones again tries to keep the tempo high and finds the captain McPherson who's eventually got the ball into the hands of Lewis McNamara and he squeezes in between the Watsonians defenders and gets under the score and Bruce Miller you called it you said Ayrshire Bulls needed to score next and they've done just that and it is the back row who link well together there McPherson and McNamara to get that try yeah and, and again they had the opportunity from the line out but um, Ian Moody swimming through the middle of it again and shutting that option down so they just start to go through the phases and just, so we said in the first half, try and bash that door down, just send pods of forwards round the corner, force the, the defence to, to fold and hope that a gap appears. And one did right in front of Blair McPherson, the captain, and he gets his side right back into this one. I think Blair McPherson was trying to knock the door down, but he couldn't do that, so he's popped it to McNara, McMara, uh, who's uh, snuck through the window. He's managed to find the gap in defence there, and the successful kick as well from the Ayrshire Bulls means that there's only 10 points now between these two sides. Townsend, just a little replay of that successful conversion attempt from the fly half. Right again, sure Bulls 19, Watsonians 29. And we did say it wasn't impossible that this game can be turned round, but what, by Ayrshire Bulls scoring, they've certainly made a game of it now. As Lee Miller kicks the ball downfield and it's been plucked well by B8 under a bit of pressure there from Matt Curry. Use it. And Cam Jones trying to slow play down and, and find the right runner and get the structure into the, the Bulls' exit. And Maguire is the player tasked with setting up that platform. And they get the penalty from that as well for not rolling away. And I think that's Graham's law who's been penalised and he'll be disappointed with that because it's a, it's really a, a, a needless penalty to give away in such a you know, such an important well, position in the field. Like I don't mean many penalties today either, but absolutely, you, what you're saying is, is go down there, force them to kick it and then play from the line out, hopefully in the the Bulls half, and instead it just gives the Bulls an easy out, a chance to, to get uh, get some territory, well it's not quite made it over halfway, but uh, they've got the, the throw into the line out as well, and that that's be very frustrating for the Watsonians coaching staff. Young Townsend takes play towards the, the halfway line, Yes, mate. Thank you. And Watsonians did well to manage the game in the first half and not give the Ayrshire, uh, the Ayrshire Bulls much of a sniff. But they're, they're starting to crack slightly and give the Ayrshire Bulls more opportunities. And that was a, a misplaced foot in the carry there. And I think that's perhaps Cecil who's just, but I think it was Ball who's burst out the line. He's absolutely clattered the opposition man, but you could hear the referee saying that the player was falling, not high. And I think you'll get a little glimpse of this, but this is the sort of commitment that they put into the defence. Yeah, it's Blair McPherson. I think he just slips here and he's going down and 
Uh, it is ball coming absolutely flying in there. Now he's not to know that Blair McPherson's going to slip. It does look high. The referee was right there and you could hear him over our referee's mic saying it wasn't high. Uh, if we saw it in slow motion, it's got to be pretty close to high. But it seemed there'd be no fault, I don't think, there of the, the tackler. It was just absolutely split second. And, but I mean, Blair McPherson looks fine. I think you'd need a tank to injure Blair McPherson. Uh, and so play goes on but um, it certainly looked it looked worse real time yes. I think that slow-mo showed that ball perhaps just glanced over the top of uh, of McPherson but yeah he's it'd be like running in a fridge I think uh, trying to run and knock down Blue McPherson fortunate that he, he slipped there because that would have been a huge collision between ball and McPherson but they put into the scrum now what's own ends Brand goes one way then the other then a little hop skip and a jump to try and release Patterson but the ball is behind him and that was dangerous because Patterson, with two scores to his name already, likes this drift defence to now ba bounce back in field. But the ball from Brand just not accurate enough there for the, the fullback to run onto. Great scrum as well. But yeah, you're right. It was just, it's probably the only thing that Brand has done wrong so far in this game. It, it just, I think he was maybe caught in two minds. He initially looked to go left from the scrum. Changed his mind, came back, and, and he probably didn't time the pass quite right to Harry Patterson. He probably would have preferred to get it in his hands a little bit earlier. Ball went behind him, ball ball lost. So um, you know, they've just won themselves a, a, the ball in a great attacking position and given it back to the Ayrshire Bulls because what Sonians will want to steady the ship here. I mean, they've still got that 10 points advantage, but they, they'll be well aware that in the time we've got left here, the Ayrshire Bulls will be very dangerous. Yeah, it's a precarious point in the game. 19 points to 29, 55 Set. minutes gone. And uh, Aaron Tate is going to enter the freight, replacing Jamie Shedden. And now Blair McPherson from the scrum, he just targeting Lee Miller. Stripped. Looking to Stripped go straight at the fly tackle. half, but great Stripped defensive work from the Watsonians' backs. They look to try and get the ball into the space. Take him back in, because it's been stripped. But the loose ball is been well gathered by Reynolds, who had to opt for plan in. B and kick down field. Right. Nine, hold! McNamara returns it, no, and it's, no, uh, it's not. a very good territorial really. gain there from the no, Ayrshire Bulls really fullback who gets play over the halfway line. It's not taken back, really. But it's you really would think is. Watsonians, they're they're under a little bit of pressure now. They're not managing the game the oh, yeah. same way that they were in the first half. No, I, I think the Ayrshire Bulls, to their credit, have probably built their way um, into it a bit more. And a fantastic carry from the base. We spoke about Ian Moody. Well, that was uh, equally good from Blair McPherson straight at Lee Miller. But I think it was Miller that, that stripped the ball. It, it, just the way it happened, the, the ball went away backwards into the Watsonians' half and they, they lost some territory and, and had to, to kick it. But it's not worked out too badly for Watsonians. Moody takes that from the line-out. And it's now back to Carl Davis. It, the ball's been nudged backwards for Watsonians as Ball and Cecil try with all their might to try and protect their vice-captain. And the referee just signalling to Bloodworth that he was infringing there, offside at the mall. It was a well-constructed mall. The pressure came on early from the Ayrshire Bulls, but Bloodworth has been deemed with being offside at the mall there and he's been penalised and it gives Watsonians a chance to kick downfield and put a little bit of pressure onto the Ayrshire Bulls. I thought that he'd been that had been a little bit harsh on him because he came through the middle but actually I think just at the very end of that you see that he, he lets go, he, he loses his binding and then comes back in from the wrong side. Um, so I, I think that probably was was his mistake there. The, uh, the upshot is that Watsonians do have a fantastic attacking opportunity. Cal Davis, the Watsonians vice captain, has uh, got his arrows with him this afternoon because he another successful line out there from the hooker. And he takes up the position at the back of the mall yet again and that's for the big guys up front just to nudge it forward. The cavalry when Van Niekirk arrives. Now asking Brand to try and get the ball away, but he's under a bit of pressure there. The ball has come loose and now McPherson has it. Looks to try and offload. He does successfully end up in the clutches of Maguire. And the Watsonians defence is now having to scramble back into position. And the Bulls will look to try and exploit that. Gets the ball through the hands and it is now Caven who has the ball. He's got some support there and Beatty. And Beatty's just a foot race to the line. He outstretches Berg. And from that loose ball, the Ayrshire Bulls go underneath the sticks. And it is now the Ayrshire Bulls 24, Watsonians 29 with a kick to come. But great play to counter-attack from their own half. They knew the opportunity was there. And you thought perhaps the, the, the move was dead when Maguire 
got there, but the Watsonians defensive line still had to get back into position. Slick hands from Watsonians and uh, good play to link up with Caven and eventually Robert Beattie, the try scorer. Yeah, and mistake there. I think Matt Curry, in fact, um, stepping into Edinburgh, winger, just didn't quite trust his inside man enough and, and stepped in when he maybe needed to to stay out, made it easy, but it was uh, it was great counter-attack, if you like, from uh, from Ayrshire Bulls. I say counter-attack, Watsonians had the ball and, and um, from the, the line-out, deep in that Ayrshire Bulls half, set them all well, but um, it was it was disrupted by the Ayrshire Bulls, stolen, and in one phase essentially they've they've gone almost end to end and we did say that they would they would there would be a period in this game where the Ayrshire Bulls yeah. would be the dominant side and they, they looked me, pretty good at the, at half time well. 29 12 for Watsonians the Ayrshire Bulls had the the capacity the ability to get themselves back into the game and they have uh, they've just done that they have the bonus point try as well so that again has huge ramifications on the the sprint table it is a, a race to the line it was Watsonians who have been quick out of the, the traps and scampered their way away from the opposition. But the Ayrshire Bulls are doing a, a good job of hunting them down from the restart. A knock on from the Ayrshire Bulls, but from 12 points to 29 at half time, it's now 26 29, and with 20 minutes left to play in this game, we've got a, an excellent game on our hands. It's been absolutely superb. I've enjoyed every single Super 6 game I've, I've watched. I think the standard of the competition uh, has been superb. I mean, there's little things like that that will drive Pete Horn mad as a coach. His side have, have just scored a uh, bonus point try, got themselves to win uh, within three points. They, they have the game with the scruff of the, the neck. If you, or if, maybe that's not, that's not the right term. They're, they're in control of the game. They're still behind on the scoreboard. And then from the, the restart, they go and drop it and they just give Watsonians a, an attacking scrum. But uh, but yeah, in, in the main, the quality of, of the of the play, the, the physicality, everything about it is it's just good, high quality rugby. Yeah, it definitely is, and you can see there, Kieran Watt with 19 on his back with the red skull cap, ex uh, GHA and and Merkiston. He also represented Scotland at under 20s. He replaces uh, Quagga Van Niekerk. He was uh, also a Scotland under 20 international. So certainly a lot of uh, experience, at age grade level in uh, both sides. But it has been. It's been a high quality game. It's been. It's been excellent. It's been end to end, and uh, I think both teams will welcome the breather. I think yeah. Is that uh, just a contact lens issue for um, Sam Graham's lot? Edinburgh prop. Yeah, he's huge, isn't he? He's a, he's, a, he's a mountain of a man. I think it's always difficult in the front row. It's, you know, sometimes you you look at the number three there. Angus Williams is. is perhaps more like what you would if you were to draw a prop you would look like that but I think you'd have to stretch the paper out a little bit for Sam Graham's law you should maybe stop there Dale no, no. if you were to draw a prop you'd probably draw me actually no comment back to the action <laughs> changing the Ayrshire Bulls pack as well impressive Michael Scott has uh, been withdrawn from the field of play he's been excellent this afternoon he has been he's, he's been very very good and a change at scrum half as well as Cam Jones is replaced by Jordan Lanark and his first action this afternoon is to be bundled over by Ian Moody and Brand with the, the loose ball he's pounced on that as it's squirmed out of the, the ruck and now Cecil picking and going round the fringes and now a little glimpse of a gap there and the Ayrshire Bulls bodies pile themselves over and I think that's a, a successful jackal on the ground from the Bulls from the replacement and the game's starting to get a little bit scrappy but I think this is perhaps what the Ayrshire Bulls need to do they need to perhaps fight a little bit more on the floor and be a little bit more adventurous with the, the loose play as well there haven't been, been many breakdown penalties to, and again that yeah. has been a feature of the competition I, I think teams have challenged the breakdown and, and one penalties there have been hardly any today but just uh, was it um, Rory Brand went there he had two or three players on, on the ground he went himself uh, sorry it was uh, whoever had carried Rory Brand was was the next man there to clear out and um, he's had a fantastic afternoon but he's as you say he's probably the smallest man in the pitch he's not who you want to be clearing out for you I think the back row were, were on the ground um, from the, the previous breakdown so Ayrshire Bulls Surviving on that occasion from the frustration of dropping the ball from the from the restart, and they've now got themselves an attacking line out. It's a successful line out again, Maguire. I think apart from one line out, which was it, it did go to a non-jumper. Most of the line outs have been really, really successful and accurate this afternoon. 
No, now Lanak no, getting into no, the no, position no, to try no, and no, spill no, the ball away, but Ian Moody getting no, himself no, in a get get side position. And this momentum from the Ayrshire Bulls is impressive at the mall. Lanak getting the ball away. In the hands of Townsend, gets to Beatty. Beatty passes it to McNamara, but it's slightly behind him. Aaron Tate is the player clearing out, and Lanak has to get across there quickly to keep the tempo in this attack. Now Jackson, he's been met with uh, by Davis and Watt in the Watsonians' defence, and Lanak now feeding Townsend. And good hands down the stand side, short, close quarter passing from the Ayrshire Bulls' backs. No, no! Ali Rogers. No! Carries the ball after his introduction from the bench, and Townsend now finding yet another replacement in Joe Knight. And again, Lanak has brought a, an increased tempo in this uh, game now. He's kicked downfield, perhaps wasted an attacking opportunity. And Patterson returns the ball, and Tate gathers on the stand side at Milbury here. The ball getting through the hands, and now Townsend feeding the ball further. To Lewis McNamara now. Caven doing well to act as an auxiliary scrum half to try and keep a bit of sting in this Ayrshire Bulls attack, but it's been well marshalled by the Watsonians' defence. Jordan finding McNamara and Tate now looking to try and make an impact off of the bench. Presented back well there for the Ayrshire Bulls as Lanak digs away at the, the ruck to get the ball away from the breakdown. But Watsonians doing well to try and dampen the momentum in this Ayrshire Bulls attack. Lanak is uh, charged with kicking it downfield. He's not got a lot of options because of the Watsonians' defence. And Guthrie fields it well and takes play back towards the Ayrshire Bulls. Yes. And Joe Reynolds now acting as an auxiliary scrum half for Watsonians. Lead it wide, lead it the head guards are the, the taped heads of Cecil and Ball link Use up it. well at the breakdown. And Brand is back on no, his feet 17. to offer his services go, nine, nine. in his specialist position of scrum half. And he kicks downfield. I think he's watching this with interest because it looks like it's starting to go stout. And it does just that and it goes out in the field and Brand will be disappointed with that because he had a similar one against Heriots which led to a Heriots try a fortnight ago. Yeah, this just goes out on the full. And, and neither scrum half kicking particularly well. I mean, if we go back a minute or two ago, Jordan Lanark opted to kick over the top. Like yeah. You said in commentary that it probably wasn't the best option. They just needed to, to go through phases. We've seen that work well for the Bulls all afternoon, and, and it was a kick to nothing. It was taken by Harry Patterson. Just and then just a, a minute later, he put up a high kick, but got far too much on it. So it was, it was easily taken at the back again by Patterson. And, and then Rory Brand... Maybe. Making the, Maybe the error on, on that occasion. So not the, the finest minute or two for either you're scrum half. Yeah, if I There's tell you not to, you're, you're going off it, so thank you for that. There has been a little shift in momentum. Right. The Ayrshire Bulls came out in the second half, a lot of intent, yeah, put the pressure on the scoreboard as well. But there has been a little shift in momentum. The Watsonians' defence has become a little bit more alert, and we know how important well these, these substitutions can be because the likes of uh, Joe Reynolds, Sorry. who came on in the game against Heritage, oh. changed the game. Okay, so well, it's going to be interesting to see what the last 15 minutes of this game holds as the, the subs come onto the bench, but the momentum is, is turned slightly away from the Ayrshire Bulls. I think it probably has, but um, they've got, because of the brand mistake, they've got themselves a, a pretty good position here, line out on the stand side of the pitch. And that stolen is, by Cecil. <laughs> and it is the first line out which has gone against the throw. We did. Uh, I was applauding the, the efforts of the hookers and the jumpers earlier on, but it's the first one, the replacement hooker for. Yeah, sure, Bull's just not able to find his target. And now McNamara. He's been wrapped up by Berg and Watt, but Berg still clings on to the fullback and tries to keep his knees off the ground, but Knight arrives and the cavalry comes to try and get the ball back on a Bull's side, but Berg doing brilliant work in close quarters to keep the fullback off the ground and gets the ball back. I don't need to, but I can try Good work it. by Watsonians, just banged off downfield by Lee Miller, deliberately kept it in, in play, and then the, the kick chase is absolutely key, and it, it was good, well connected once again by Watsonians, so no obvious gaps for the, the Ayrshire Bulls counter, and then the strength of Lewis Berg to, to make the tackle, hold his man up, and for the second time in this this game we see a, a maul, which um, the ball doesn't come back, so the, uh, the scrum goes to the opposition. 
a brand new front row, Roddy Tanner, Ali Rogers and Calvin Henderson for the Bulls against the, the, the start and original front row for Watsonians. You can see there, Graham's Lord Davis and Williams, so it's going to be interesting to see what impact that has at this set piece. Brand again rolls the ball in, the nudge does come on from the Bulls, but it's a, a steadier scrum there from Watsonians. Reynolds coming in as first receiver, kicks the ball downfield to McNamara. He's inside. He's got to try and clear his lines. No, he's inside. And he takes play back up towards the, the halfway inside, line. Mate. And this is a game of now of fine margins. It was really, really comfortable for Watsonians, but it's you've got to try and limit your mistakes now. And that's a, a good territorial game from McNamara from the from the kick. Nine. It is, yes, because it was a good option, I think, 11. from from Joe Reynolds 11. is to try and push the Ayrshire Bulls back into their 22. You okay, can see that Watsonians we want to just play territory now. And uh, it was a good back, response please. from Matt Namara. The Ayrshire Bulls fullback scored the first try of the afternoon out wide on that uh, that left flank. You can see Murray Scott there who's uh, going to replace Rory Brand who has had a, a good afternoon's work, a good 67 minutes. He's a, a certainly a player that will be looking for some more game time, Murray Scott. He's a, a late call up because of the, the commitments of Rowan Frostwick who's being called up as the 24th man for Edinburgh. No Murray Scott looking to try and get his hands on the ball for the first time, but Cal Davis keeps it from him, and wisely, because he's set up the platform, and now Berg looking to try and make some yards. And Scott having to dig about to get the ball back, but does find Graham's law. And the big burly prop manages to make some yards there as well as Lee Miller. Looks to try and spot the gap in the Ayrshire Bulls defence. It closed pretty quickly. His options were limited. So he kicks downfield. And that's good experience from the, the fly half because there was not a lot on. But he knows he needs to be playing rugby down in the Ayrshire Bulls 22. Yeah, good carrying initially by the Watsonians forwards. And then the, the Ayrshire Bulls defence up hard. And Lee Miller had the, the presence of mind and the ability. You've still got to execute to put that through on his wrong foot. I think if it was be his left foot that he, he kicked that with through. And it's his... His side, of course, it's a, an Ayrshire Bulls throw into the line out, but uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're back in their own 22. It, Cal Davis is that down getting some treatment. You, you mentioned all change in the, the Ayrshire Bulls front row, no changes yet in the Watsonians front row. The engine some of these guys have got is unbelievable. You expect the pro player Sam Graham's lost still in there, but Cal Davis, I think he could just play. I think I'm sure you and I said in week one he could play another game, I'm sure. Yeah, his, en his, his engine is phenomenal. Um, I think he's again, he, he seems to be get better every year. Um, We've got a lot of maturity as well, but that's another hey, line out which. That's a bit of a mess, please, fellas. I've asked you to stay on the line, not on it, because you're inside, not on the line. I think the referee's description is bang on. A bit of a mess, fellas. Yeah, so I think that was there, um, better than what He's I was going to describe it, so I'll leave it to Johnny Perry. On the line. But the just when we were praising the, the line outs, it's, you know, these the, the replacement, sometimes the, the momentum line. comes out. Roddy Tanner is a. You know, he's a, he's a very accomplished hooker, made a good impact off the bench against Southern Knights, but he's. Now got to try and find his accuracy at the line out. And he's not straight there. And that's a, that's been three scrappy line outs from the, the, the replacement hooker. He used to play for uh, Mosley and Nas National One. Returning from a foot injury, so trying to get some rugby in him. But you can see here, just not able to get that straight into the line out. Yeah, I mean, Cecil was up contesting there. I don't know if that was enough to, to put him off. He realised he had to be absolutely bang on and, and he just pulled it down his side. And you mentioned the changes and that is one thing that I've noticed in Super 6 so far, that when the changes come, we get a very flat 10 minutes. Teams seem to lose their shape a little bit. The line-outs, it's not the first time we've, we've seen it in other games as well. The line-outs go just a little bit as well. And I think, um, you know, it's still there for, for both teams. I imagine the next side to score will win this one. Yeah, I think that's. Um, I think that is the, the the transition from club to professional rugby. I think you do get that in the club game, and it's been able to enter a game and and still continue continue that momentum that your club or your team has built. And from that scrum, it looks like it's gone against the head, and McPherson, the captain, just bundles the first tackler out the road as he charges his way downfield. You got penalty advantage now. I know the penalty is coming, but it's into the hands of Beatty. He kicks downfield, but the referee's going to bring that back and. You know, we do say about the set piece, the, the fresh front row there from the Ayrshire Bulls certainly making an impact at the at the set piece. Yeah, you don't see that very often. And both sides have had opportunities up. in the opposition 22 and, and not being able to uh, to make anything of it. And I, I still think one or other of these sides will, will score again. But 
we've, we've seen it before. They, you know, it's not just Full-time not being clinical stop. enough and taking those opportunities. So, you know, there's, there's a possibility that this, this becomes the, the final score here because um, because they're not able to, and again, the game broken up a little bit by the substitutions, they're just not able to get themselves across the line. Yeah, you've, got a, you've perhaps got a case of, of both teams being too scared to make any mistakes and go for that win, and it's becoming a bit of a stalemate in the last 10, 11 minutes. It was uh, on the hour mark we got the last score from Robert Beatty, so there's not been a lot of scores in the last 10 minutes, but this might be a little change in approach as well from Otsonians as they bring on Jason Baggett for Joe Reynolds. More of a pivotal 10. I assume they'll put him at 10 and Miller out to 12, but I, I don't know. We'll see how they set up in, in just a second. Taken by Cecil there, though. Good line out. It's uh, scrappy on the floor and it's been knocked on. So although the line out was accurate at the oh, mall, it's a, really good steal. He's just it. a loose arm in there. The referee saying it was a, a very good steal. So it's he, a great steal. He's just he thought that was all clean and legal. But you can see here as Cecil got up, he looked to try and set up and you can see the arm there from Calvin Henderson just getting in there, sweeping the ball back and getting it back on an Ayrshire Bulls side. So Ayrshire Bulls have eight minutes to try and snatch what would have looked like an unlikely victory at half time. Nicky Walker and Fergus Pringle just looking on, I think they're a little bit Crouch. more anxious than they perhaps were after 40 minutes. Point. As uh, what's her name's look to try and navigate Set. their way to a win. Use it. Another secure scrum. And it's came back on the Ayrshire Bulls side and Lanak goes down the blind side. He looks to try and release Townsend. Yeah, well Bulls looking now to try and draw in the Watsonian's defence. But are perhaps put off by the fact that the defence has been pretty stern, certainly on the, the halfway line and round about those areas. And they do win the penalty. This is a, a big penalty to win further down the field. And the captain at the heart of it yet again, McPherson. And perhaps a hint of offside from that box kick there, but we maybe let him off on this occasion as Patterson did well to field, and you can see McPherson just down there, strong body position, Jacklin the ball, and wins the penalty. And but lots of people watching say, well, why did the Ayrshire Bulls not just keep playing? They were just about, you know, they're on their own side of halfway, but only just. But it just shows you the, the advantage that you can gain by opting a kick. If you get a good chase, you win yourself a, a penalty. And instead of going through umpteen phases where you can never quite get yourself across the halfway line, across the halfway line, you now find yourself with an attacking line out very close to what's on his try line now. I think they've had three that they've made a, a hash of. They've eventually scored on a couple of occasions, but not the way they would have wanted to. So that's a really important line out. Yeah, choreography will have to be blob on for this attacking chance. There's still a, a bit of work to do before they get closer towards that Watsonian's line. And Tanner does find his jumper. And it's Bloodworth who has risen highest to to get the ball in hand as the spectators watch on and encourage this Ayrshire Bulls pack closer towards that Watsonian's line. You can see the legs pumping there, starting to try and put the pressure on. But the anchor's down from Watsonian's and they look to try and splinter off the side. A little knock on there, the referee has noticed from the Ayrshire Bulls, so it's a little for Watsonian's. They'll have to try and clear their lines into the hands of Baggett and he kicks downfield. But he's not able to escape is 22 but the referee awarding the penalty so the pressure is off for what's on ends they can kick downfield yeah I mean another wasted opportunity I, I think I'm right in saying that's four line outs that last season I would have expected the Ayrshire Bulls to, uh, to to probably drive over from straight from the line out I, and, and I don't think we've had one today that they've managed to take cleanly and, and get set and go over. They have scored from a couple of position, of, of that position, but it hasn't been from the, the driving line out. And I think it's something that they will want to improve on as they go into the, the playoffs and then into the regular season later on this year because it has been such an attacking weapon for them. Yeah, especially when they've been getting themselves into really good attacking positions. They've been leaving those chances out. out in the field they've did ve they've done very well to get themselves back into this game 26 points to 29 
they've uh, stopped what's only in scoring in the second half as well. So it's been 35 minutes of uh, not Great conceding contest. a point. Back. Back. And from the the line out, Cal Davis is snaffled round the fringes. He's on his back. He's now couped. And Ayrshire Bulls look to try and pile the pressure on, but the, the ball's going to come back on it. Well, it's only inside and uh, perhaps a little disagreement now. It's something that we don't see a lot of in Super 6, but you can see what it means to these players and, and people are saying this is a preparation for the season. <laughs> that, that's not evident of, uh, of any sort of friendly preparation. There's nothing friendly there. The Bulls will be getting very, very frustrated. You see Carl Davis driven back there. The, the Bulls have got hands on that. I'm just listening to the referee there. I think the Bulls will feel that they probably should have been allowed to steal that. And Carl Davis had, was, was holding onto that on the deck. And I think there's an argument for that. But they will be frustrated, the fact that they've just wasted an opportunity, which may well have won the game for them down at the, the other end. That's one of the big things. As soon as you see a player with his back on the ground, with his head facing towards the, the opposition try line, it, it, it's dangerous. And I, I think that Cal Davis is perhaps fortunate there that he's not conceded the penalty because even the visually looking at that as a neutral, you know, you would think he's in a, a lot of danger there. And Ayrshire Bulls have got the pressure on. By the way, the referee's closer than us, so I'm sure it will be the right. And more knowledgeable. <laughs> There's also no doubt about that, so uh, we will say that it was the right decision, and it's a Watsonian scrum. Murray Scott spent some time in the Clement Averne Academy as a young 17-year-old. He's having to work hard and mustering all that training and experience in France to get the ball away from that scrum. It's in the hands of Baggett, another player who started his career as a, as a scrum half. And Cal Davis. And he gets himself in a better position there now, Ian Moody. He's got open prairie to run into it. He's a, a player that's a very good sevens player as well. Manages to bundle the Ayrshire Bulls defence out of the road initially. And now Watsonians will look to try and strike and put this game to bed. Baggett finds, eventually finds Lee Miller. Lee Miller's got some support on the touchline there, but not able to release the ball. And now Scott looks to try and keep the tempo in this attack and Cal Davis just ghosting the run there That's it's came into the hands of Berg and Watsonians now knocking at the door with a couple of minutes remaining they will love nothing more than to restrict Ayrshire Bulls to one point and ball and Cecil now going round the side Baggett has got an opportunity to dance back in field he looks to try and offload he tried to find Patterson but the attacking opportunity has gone a beg in there trying to force the pass there Baggett with perhaps if you got the ball through the hands, the opportunity would have been on. Yeah, I think force is the right choice of word, words there. Let's just look at how the, the position came. I think it was uh, Ian Moody from this one that just did he pick and go around the side, realised there was nobody at home at the side of the breakdown. Careless, if you like, by Ayr, uh, Ayrshire Bulls, but away goes Moody. Held on to the pass there, but, and I think it was probably right. Bumped, he's so, he's so physical, bumps off the, the last defender, and then all that Watsonians need to do was just keep a hold of the ball here, keep going through phases. They did so, and just but just towards the, the end there, um, when, when play comes across to the right hand side, just maybe lost a bit of, a bit of shape, started to, to force things where they might have been better to just keep going through the phases. Yeah, that's, that's a, that is a difficult point in terms of this game. It's a three point game. What, what what do you opt when you're behind the when you're behind the defensive line? Do you do you do you look to go for the score or do you look to try and keep the game out? So it's uh, so it's it's really interesting. Right here, Mark's here. I'm coming around this side. Two minutes left. Let's go, boys. Come on, I'll tell you as I'll bind long. Both your elbows Chance are going down. Keep them up. Defensive scrum here for Ayrshire Bulls. So they're they're gonna have to go from deep to to try and win this game. We've got two minutes left here. It's a three-point game. Ayrshire Bulls, who currently sit second in the Ford Rock Super Six Sprint Series, trying to hunt down Watsonians at the top. A reminder that the points carry over after the split, so this is a huge game in terms of who's gonna have the advantage going into it. Use it now! The last round of fixtures. Nine. Use it, please! After the split. From the scrum, it's successful, and Ayrshire Bulls looking to play expansively, but Berg does well to stop McNamara. Lanak now looking to box and kick it downfield. 
which perhaps will gain territory, but they'll lose possession as Patterson hunting his hat trick. He finds Curry, who opts to go back in field where the supporting players of what's own ends are. It's a bit of a mess at the breakdown there as the Ayrshire Bulls look to make a mess of it and a fight for it on the floor. Bag it now, getting the ball to Berg. And it's pragmatic from what's own ends now as they look to try and squeeze the, the life out of this game and grind down a win. As you can see from Moody, who's been playing auxiliary scrum half there, looking to try and take it slower. He's perhaps isolated himself here, but does well to roll round and legally as well. Scott Barkin orders as he finds Angus Williams, who's going to go the full 80. I'll wait and tell you. Scott again seesawing through this stage of the game. Yeah, well moved. Ball's there. Trying to play field position and territory, Leave secure the ball. Good man, thank you. No, I'll tell you when. Play slowed down there from Cecil as he went at a pedestrian pace into contact as the Watsonians players are asking how long left on the clock. You can see that we're almost at the 80 minutes as Watsonians looked at play the clock, they pass back into the pocket where Baggett is sitting and it is full time. Watsonians don't score any points in the second half but manage to hold on to victory against an Ayrshire Bulls side who came out in the second half and they looked like they were going to try and win that game and you can see a player on his honkers there. Um, Ian Moody, it's a, a player who's, who's certainly caught the eye this afternoon. Yes, that, that, that there been. It's one of those games that you almost had to leave it to the very end to play, to, to choose our, our Fuzz Rock Super Six Player of the Match. But we've given it to, to Ian Moody, Rory Brand. We spoke about all that first half, but he, he maybe drifted out slightly in the second half because Watsonians were under the cush from a, a, an Ayrshire Bulls side trying to fight their way back into the game, and he was replaced, I think, with 13, 14 minutes left. Where Ian Moody was on there right to the the death and, and right across the the. Everything you would expect of a number eight, he was brilliant today. He was, he was good in the line out. He picked well from the, the base, especially when the, the scrum was retreating at times. He put in some big hits in, in defence. His work at the breakdown was, was good. There was a couple of times when he, he, he came through the middle of the, the Ayrshire Bulls mall and managed to disrupt that. And then we saw him to the fore in the last couple of minutes carrying uh, pick and go when he went round the, the side of the breakdown or through the breakdown almost and, and got Watsonians that territory in the Ayrshire Bulls 22 so he did everything that you would expect of a number 8 and more today and he is our first rock Super 6 player of the match Yeah, it's what Southern Knights loss is Watsonians game and the experience head of Ian Moody helps get Watsonians over the line to a 26-29 to victory on the road it maintains an undefeated um, record as well in this campaign it's 5 wins from 5 they've beat every single team in the sprint series which will give them a lot of confidence going into the the split they sit top their points carry over and it's going to be a huge effort from Ayrshire Bulls and uh, whoever joins them in the top three after the culmination of our, our last round of fixtures which uh, is following this game Stirling County against Heriot so it certainly sets up a, a really interesting end to the the regular sprint series as uh, the round robin is coming to a close. You can see there, Buttermuir Bears picking up a, a bonus point victory against the Southern Knights at Megatland last night and, and a tight encounter here at Milbury. Ayrshire Bulls 26, Watsonians 29. And you can see we've still got Stirling County versus Heriot's Rugby to come here this afternoon. Hugh Dan McLennan will be commentating on that game alongside Bruce Miller. So this is what it means to the table. Still a lot to be decided as we head into our final game. So Heriot's Heriot's um, can still make the they can still make the uh, the uh, top top three um, but perhaps the the numbers don't really align there because Heriot's are actually on 11 points so they can still make the, the top three. A little error on the table there. But they can still make uh, the top three because they've got a game against Stirling County. They sit on 13 points. So a lot to play for. Hit Stirling County this afternoon between Stirling County and Heriot's, which is our final game in round five of the Fors Rock Super 6 Sprint Series. But Watsonians and Ayrshire Bulls do cement their place in the top three. And Watsonians perhaps cement their place as uh, favourites, Bruce. 
Absolutely favourites now, still haven't lost in five games and I think we maybe said this in the, the build-up but just worth pointing out that when the, the league splits into a top three and a bottom three, the slate is not wiped clean. It's not like a playoffs, which is, is what will happen I think in the in the regular season later this year. The, the points continue on, um, there are only two more games. So first we'll play, well, um, I think each, each team will have a, a home game um, and Watsonians have a six points advantage over the Ayrshire Bulls, depending on what happens later on today at the Bridge Hawks. Stirling County could could actually end up second with a, with a split and within five points, but you know with only ten points to play for over the, the two games, five points is a pretty healthy looking advantage. Can you really see Watsonians losing both of those playoff games? But um, the advantage for Watsonians as well is they'll they'll get a, a week off to recover and recuperate and try and you know nurse some of these big collisions that they've taken this afternoon. So it's certainly advantage Watsonians in the Forge Rock Super 6 sprint series as we head towards the culmination of this tournament which is I think has been a great addition to the, the Super 6 it's been exciting as you can still see we've got some interesting fixtures to, to come to decide who is going to be playing who but it's been an entertaining game here this afternoon it has been now, certainly the first half was, was breathless and Watsonians were, were superb but it was Ayrshire Bulls who got the first score of it uh, this afternoon's game and after some good powerful work by the forwards it was uh, McNamara who was on the end of a, a loopy pass from Jordan to go over in the corner that was the first line out though that uh, the Ayrshire Bulls were well let's say I was going to say Butcher that's maybe a little bit harsh that they would have hoped to score directly from but it, uh, they, they won the ball they went through phases they sucked in that Watsonis defence and, and they got the ball into the hands of McNamara for the first score and then it was a ch the chance for Watsonians to reply and it was an acute line from Patterson, the fullback, who was on the end of some neat hands from uh, Miller and Reynolds as they got the ball through the hands and just hit the, the fullback coming at pace. And, and he had a good afternoon as well. He was good. He was very secure. Under he, I think he dropped the first high ball. Um, but after that, he was very secure at the back uh, and scored himself a, a couple of tries. Very, very good player. Great future ahead of him, Harry Patterson. The Ayrshire Bulls defence just a little bit flat-footed, I think, there, though. Yeah, I think there was a, a couple of occasions where the Ayrshire Bulls in the first half will perhaps be a little bit disappointed in their defence, but they certainly sprung into life with their attack, and especially their scrum half. Cam Jones throwing the dummy, and Maine was just left all at seat to try and stop the scrum half darting in, but that's exactly what you like to see from a, a wiry wee scrum half. Absolutely, yes. Always looking for gaps. We said in commentary that uh, Watsonians didn't put their, their guard defender or didn't get anybody in at that guard position and a good scrum half like Cam Jones will always be alert to those opportunities. And then this was uh, perhaps one of the pick of the bunch. Curry scampering down the stand side, just uh, taking three defenders out of the game, eventually hauled down to ground, but kept the ball alive through Carl Davis. Then it ended up in the hands of Miller and it's this pass which released Patterson because he managed just to check the Bulls' defence and the pace from the, the full-back. He got his second score of the afternoon, outstretching shed, and, and it was a, a great score. It was then followed by an equally good score, but the, def, the, the run from Berg there is the, the one that made this try for eventually. Uh, Curry again going in for the score. Yeah, two cracking tries there. We'll, we'll, we'll just uh, come back to that in a second. Yeah, you can see that the man of the match there, Ian Moody, was happy as ever, uh, getting a handshake from his captain, Lee Miller. Is he gets the, the Fodge Rock Super 6 player of the match after a, a good day's work at the base of that scrum. The uh, experience number 8 will be very happy, but this is back to the try from Curry. Yes, just trying to jog my memory, wonder what try was about to, to come on screen there. Yes, uh, what's only in showing in those two tries there, their ability to, to mix up what they were doing, attack in the, in the tight spaces and manipulate the defence with a short run from, from Bergen. And prior to that, Scoring in the in the wide channels. And then it was uh, this score, which uh, just before the stroke of half-time, Berg being released but kept the ball alive yet again, releasing Lee Miller. And he found the, the scrum half brand, who had an excellent, his, his best 40 minutes in Super 6 rugby. He uh, goes over for a score. And, you know, that was that was perhaps at half-time. You were looking and thinking it's going to be a bit ominous for Ayrshire Bulls. But they came out in the second half and managed to restrict Watsonian's opportunities. And it was the, the back row from the Bulls who managed to link up here. The captain, McPherson, just bouncing off a couple of pa players to release uh, Lewis McNamara, who is starting this afternoon in place of uh, Ryan Sweeney. And he gets the score. And again, a powerful, robust back row from the Ayrshire Bulls. 
Yeah, good work by the forwards. I, I think I missed probably at the, at the time that the offload had been made, but just coming around the corner and then running powerfully. I thought you're, you're right that um, the captain, McPherson, had gone over, but he did offload there to, to Lewis McNamara. There, that's very hard to defend because you just got to keep coming right, round the corner and and, um, and get yourself set before the attack get themselves uh, in place, and they, they didn't on that occasion. And then from uh, some scrappy Watsonians play, the Ayrshire Bulls were able to strike and get the ball through the hands. Good work from B. He did find McNamara. And then on the stand side, it was uh, Caven who had a, a re reasonably quiet afternoon, but he got an assist in there because he managed to release Robert Beatty, who went in for a score. On that was on the hour mark, and the last 20 minutes was quite tetchy, but it was a great counter-attack and play from the Ayrshire Bulls. It was support, uh, superb, yes, because this came from a, a Watsonians. They, I think, was it from a line-out? They certainly had a, a mall set in the Ayrshire Bulls 22, and the ball was stripped, and the Ayrshire Bulls have just gone end-to-end. -end. Beatty, who was was quiet, but on the few occasions he got his hands on the ball, he, he showed what a quality player he is. Yeah, Watsonians were able to match the Ayrshire Bulls in physicality, and uh, I think their defensive tempo as well was able to keep the, the outside backs quiet. But that was the, the final score of the game from the boot of Christian Townsend. So it finished here, Ayrshire Bulls 26-29. <clears throat> and it means that we do have our first two participants in the, the top three of the, the Forge Rock Super 6 Sprint Series. And it is the two teams on your screen there, Ayrshire Bulls and Watsonians comfortably through. And it is all down to the next game, which is coming up shortly. And it is between Stirling County and Heriots. But it does finish here at Milbury in the Forge Rock Super 6 Sprint Series. It's Ayrshire Bulls 26, Watsonians 29.